Okay, I'm calling this meeting to order. If you would please rise. Chief Ayotte, would you lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance, please? Sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the November 9th, 2017, Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. This is a workshop tonight. Um, my name is Stephen LeBranch. I'm the chairman. I would like the members to please introduce themselves, starting with Ginny Bridal Russell. Ginny Bridal Russell, school board representative. Sonny Crosby. Brian Lapp. Steve Henderson. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Rep. Mike Wolf. Danielle Augustine. Jones. David Mara. Bob Land, Village District Representative. Okay, and we have Barbara Kravitz here, our recording secretary. So tonight, this workshop, we're going to be first starting with the fire department's budget. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. If I might, we decided previously we're going to deal with only line items. So I'd like to make a motion for the fire department's line item. Yes, be <laughs> before you do that, Tim, I just want to mention um, everybody, just as a bit of a reminder, that... Um, Ask your questions through me. I will. I will maintain order. Okay. Raise your hand if you have a question, and and then you can ask your question. Okay. So, having just, said that, I thought I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> having said that, Tim, continue. Thank you. I move the fire department line item three million seven hundred forty-seven thousand and fourteen dollars. I'll second it. Okay. Discussion. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Please make your presentation. Oh, I was thinking this is this is fantastic. I love you guys. We're trying to expedite things this year, so you have nothing to say. Anybody we can move right into questions. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the nice deputy and I are you. very happy to be here. Nice to see you as well. Um, so we are here requesting this budget as presented. Uh, you will notice that it's a five point. I'm going to get it wrong here. Five point six eight uh, percent increase. Um, primarily driven by wages as a result of contractual obligations. There are several line item changes. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you may have. Um, I want to mention that the items that we have in front of us, there are a couple of items that, um, that the town manager and the selectmen are looking at that would be taken out of this budget and paid for with money that's still in this year's budget. Um, one of those items is a $20,000 outboard engine for the Marine One, and the other is, I think, $44,000 to paint the uh, ladder truck. That is a little bit under that, but yes, sir, that's true. We're looking at that right now, um, trying to do that. We have three quotes for the ladder paint job. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we're working on crafting um, the document for the town manager for the outboard motor. Uh, as you'll recall, a year and a half ago, we had to buy one uh, for the port side of Marine One as it failed during a training exercise. Uh, this motor that we're looking to replace is the same age, so we're looking to do that. Right, right. So, having said that, um, having said that, would you like to um, go through your, your uh, budget and explain basically why we have a 5.68% increase. Sure. So generally speaking, like I said, the uh, collective bargaining agreement between the two unions, um, the, the local 2664 uh, contract was voted in the affirmative. So they received um, two pay raises in the subsequent years that followed. The additional uh, component to the contractual obligations there are so many of the new members. We had four new members in the last 12, 14 months. Um, They've all come of age, and so after the first year, the step agreements, uh, step raises that go along with the agreement. Um, the fire officers, local 3017 uh, contract was not approved at that time, so the balance is is based on the firefighters at this at this point in time. All right. So the first block that we usually come to is the administrative side. All right. Um, regular wages. There was a wage adjustment as a result of the non-union wage increase granted by the board of selectmen for my salary. 
Um, holiday pay was an increase as there was no uh, assignment for the chief officers. So that's now been assigned as a line item and it's part of the budget. Any questions on those items up top? We the, move down to the... No, I noticed that this, the uh, gasoline and diesel, those sure. numbers are pretty solid, Christy. Get updated as well yeah okay. and you have the the run rates right what we're using as far as um, it's the, in the, the it's price in, per gallon yeah it's in the book here yeah it's a dollar 84 for gasoline if i'm not mistaken 209 for diesel right our marine fuel costs a little bit more as you might imagine so right right exactly it's right it's right in the book okay. on page 32 for everybody here right um okay anybody have any questions on this part tim let me ask you a question so with the procedure that you have in mind we won't ask any questions until he's presented all of it. Is that correct? Uh, <clears throat> well, as I understood it, we were simply going to be making motions for line items only, which is what I did, and uh, we proceed with all the presentation they want. And, and then, after that, we'll people can have a roundtable discussion. Okay. 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 So, you know what? In that case, Chief just continue on right. throughout the entire budget. Okay, so uh, what I can tell you is above that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, you'll see a 25.99% increase. It's a, it's a percentage increase is very large, but the monetary increase is, uh, is essentially very small. Um, that was for um, staff development, I believe. Yeah. You see that line item, there was a new um, charge for a professional membership for one of our captains. So I believe that was $175. Uh, you'll see a 14.55% increase for supplies and expenses. As you may recall, a year and a half, two years ago now, uh, I came before the board and I requested a copier. We were able to buy that out of end of year funds, and the total for that was about $7,155, uh, if memory serves. The first year of that agreement, we got free toner and the maintenance agreement. Now we have to pay for toner, and we also have to pay $216 a year for the maintenance agreement so that they can come in and, and maintain the, the new copier. So that that uh, comes for the subsequent increase. Yes. Uh, we've already addressed gasoline and diesel, and I have not requested any new equipment for administration. Continue on? Yes, please. Can I ask okay. a question? David, sure. is that, may I ask a question? Well, we just talked about this. We're going to do the questions after he makes his presentation. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Right. So okay. please continue on. So in fire suppression, you'll see that for the regular wages, we see an increase of 5.1%. Uh, this, again, goes with the contractual obligations for the percentage increase for uh, raises, uh, cost of living adjustment. And it also includes the step raises for each of the uh, firefighters that have come to that various step. The other thing that it includes this year, in June, I believe it was early June, we, we completed rescue swimmer and rescue boat operator training. And you know I've sat before you before to discuss the importance of that. Uh, with that, we've got everybody except one firefighter now, I believe, that is certified as a rescue boat operator and a rescue swimmer. They also, as a result of that, have a 1% uh, stipend in their, in their pay once they receive that, that um, certificate. So that's their incentive. Uh, that adjust, uh, comes for the adjustment there. We're not looking to change any of the OT wages as we feel that that number works for us. Um, OT callback, I do believe we're remaining the same. You'll see an adjustment for the sick leave coverage. Uh, this was, the, the budget was fabricated for us here in June. We, were, we handed in to Mr. Welch, and what I did is I looked at where we were in June and where we were headed. Um, it, it appeared to me that we would be passing uh, where we have been in the past, and with the contractual obligations, what I did is I took half the, the projected amount of increase and installed that into the budget. So I used the percentage increase plus what I projected us to be under uh, by the end of the year. Right now, we're doing very well in that line item if you look at our financials, um, but we are one injury away, and knock wood, I don't wish that on any of us from expending that entire line item. Uh, vacation, it, the 5.3 obviously is uh, right in line with the contractual obligations. Right. Fireworks detail is up 6.67%. That's a $500 increase. That's as a result of contractual obligations as well. This is for the fireworks details for the firefighters. Uh, they're on scene to help assist with the crowd control. They're also on scene to conduct any type of fire suppression that might occur as a result of the fireworks. Uh, they're there throughout the evening. Um, the fire prevention officer does the inspections. They assist with that. The fire prevention's line item for fireworks is in his own overtime. Um, 
under new equipment, you'll see the, the percentage increase is 4.58, but the real, the meat of it here is a $24,000 um, line to request funding for cutters and spreaders for engine four. As you know, in 2016, we purchased engine four for the beach, and it does not have hydraulic cutters or spreaders, which are our uh, extrication equipment. And anybody who's dropped off leaves in the last week or so, you've seen them out there cutting up some cars. And we're, we've just had a wonderful class delivered by a natural firefighter um, who came in and talked about this. It's an essential piece of equipment, so I put that into under new equipment. The equipment other, um, that particular line item, I'm just going to have to reference this for a moment here. We made some changes to this, and the increase is a result of uh, the age on our SCBA bottles. So in 2007, we received a grant, an AFG grant, that allowed us to purchase Scott SCBA. Uh, that's our air tanks that you see on the back when we're going into the current buildings. And those bottles are carbon fiber wrapped, and they're required to be hydro tested every five years. This is their 10th year. They're required to be hydroed. We have 84 bottles that need to be hydroed, so the cost is in that. Additionally, we have a machine called a port account, which attaches to the front of our face pieces, and it, it detects leaks in the mask, and yearly we go through a fitting to make sure that the mask seal is appropriate so that we're not ingesting any type of uh, hazardous materials, smoke, or chemicals. So we did not have a line item for the port account prior to this. I added that to this line item in particular. The next line item for replacement equipment includes, I'm not mistaken, the $20,000 for the right. Marine One starboard side motor. Mm -hmm. um, we did reduce a couple other items in there, uh, all to, to which uh, SCBA bottle replacement, but that is primarily driven by the Marine One replacement for the starboard side motor. Okay. So going on to fire suppression, I mean fire uh, prevention. prevention. Uh, very little in the way, as a matter of fact, no increases. We've gone down on supplies and, and expenses because our fire prevention secretary, Stephanie Welsh, has done a tremendous job researching uh, how to get it. Anybody who's come to the open house knows that we provide rulers, pencils. Uh, they say Hampton Fire Rescue on them. The kids are getting helmets, you know, and they, they leave with a goodie bag. And um, she did a tremendous job of finding a great resource in, in getting these supplies, and we were able to do it and secure it at a much better rate. So I put in there the rate that reflects what we were able to find and project for next year. Thank you. Um, no, no, no equipment at zero. Uh, training? Training. So medical services falls under training. This is primarily our uh, line item that we use for the physicals for pre-employment. Um, when we hire in, we need to do a full scanning of uh, cardiac, lung function. We do blood work. Uh, drug and alcohol tests, as you might imagine. Additionally, uh, there's a requirement for anybody performing any type of physical training up at the New Hampshire Fire Academy to uh, have a, a signed waiver that the doctor's done a physical on them. So we've built in here two extra physicals for the year so that they're able to go get a physical if anybody's looking to do uh, trench rescue or high angle rescue, rope rescue, that sort of thing. So we've actually partnered with Clear Choice at this time uh, out of Portsmouth. Initially, we were paying $1,500 for physicals, and now we're down to $700 for a physical. So, uh, primary driver of that. You will see training and recruitment is a big line item jump, 60% jump, 61%. And this is driven by something that I've been working on in front of you now for at least two years. Um, several Two years ago, I talked about live fire training. And what that meant was that I was putting firefighters into an environment that had actual fire that they would actually have to um, extinguish. And this goal was to get the entire group, one team, up to a burn building so that they could train together at, in one sitting. This was never placed in a, as a line item. This is the line item for that. What we're looking to do is do fire training. So whether it's the ice rescue training that we have uh, coming up this winter, or trench rescue training, which has not taken place, uh, confined space rescue training, which has not taken place in s over a decade. Um, this will allow the entire team to go together as a group to, to do the training offsite. That's what that line item is for. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, communications. Uh, you'll see that there's a small decrease in the wages line item. We hired a new uh, fire alarm operator within the last 18 months, and the lower salary is reflected there. OT wages have gone up. Uh, 
they are their their salary is a little bit different the way it works out when they're paid they're paid on a rotating system unlike the firefighters which is averaged out at 42 hours per week their salary is paid per pay period that they're working so they'll have 40 hours plus eight hours of overtime and then on one week they will have a 24-hour paycheck uh, so their their overtime works a little differently and in an order to get a, a broad-based education across all boards, roll out SOPs, have communications, what we've also implemented, and you'll see the cost in this, is a quarterly meeting with three of the four fire alarm operators coming in off duty, so I'll pay them overtime. Uh, there will be a fourth, the fourth fire alarm operator on duty will be attending the meeting, and I will cover the overtime with firefighter overtime to cover fire alarm. So this will allow quarterly meetings so that we can exchange information in a timely fashion. Radio maintenance is the largest driver there. Uh, there have been some changes along with um, the increased maintenance on our aging radios. <coughs> some of our radios are out of compliance. Um, we're working on replacing all of the Astros, which are radios that were purchased on state funded grant, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, 16 years ago. Um, we function with them now, but they are past their serviceable date. And our, our radio maintenance company, Two Way, it, they can't provide service to them anymore. There's no parts for them or anything like that. They're out of date. Additionally, we've had uh, some issues with paging system. We still use small pagers. They're called Minotaurs. Uh, you've seen us wearing them on our belts probably, and they, they start barking their speakers, and they'll, they'll call out when there's coverage, if there's a fire, if there's coverage needed for medical aid or whatever it might be. Uh, they're starting to fail. They're an older system as well, so we're looking to replace those. Repair services, yep. um, you'll see that we have increased that line item under vehicle maintenance by 25%. The biggest chunk driving that is obviously the $33,000 that we're looking to use to repaint the ladder truck. Uh, if you recall, we had two dead man uh, engine two, the 2001 Smeal, as a result of frame problems. Um, it was a real big problem for us to do that. Uh, we looked at all of our other apparatus Engine three had some problems that were sanded off and were able to be repainted. We we're also able to do that with the ladder truck. Uh, however, the exterior portion of the ladder truck, the cab and the body, uh, is showing where it's 11 years old and it's starting to bubble paint, especially around the hinges and the windshields. And before it becomes a maintenance nightmare, we're looking to repaint. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Fire right, stations yeah. and buildings. Yep. Uh, electric and heating fuel, you'll see I dropped. And the reason is that when I first sat before you, our, new, our building was new. And we did not have experience in that building to know what it would cost we were projecting only. Uh, based on our three years of experience in the building right now and looking back at what we spent, we feel that these numbers, especially if we're keeping in line with what the utility costs are right now currently, will project out that the cost savings will be reflected here. And that's why I subtracted as much as I did. Building maintenance. Building maintenance. So there are, there are two primary drivers to the increase in the building maintenance line item. The first is a repair and service agreement for our heating and cooling system. We're currently using Palmer and Sitcard, a local company. Uh, they come in twice a year to perform maintenance on the system, replace all the filters. Uh, they're called on emergencies, and generally it's all under the same umbrella. It's an, a total of $8,000 a year for both buildings. So this is not only headquarters, but also the beach fire station. So in total, it's about $4,000 worth of maintenance each time that they do that. Additionally, you know that we installed two generators. The one up at Winnicunnet Road is a 125 kilowatt generator, uh, Caterpillar, and the one at the beach fire station is a 150 kilowatt generator, Kohler. And both of them need to be run and maintained. And in order to test them, they need to be done under a load bank. In order to do that, the costs were presented to us, and it's going to be the first time that we'll be able to do that. I included that in this line item, as far as this goes. Overall, you see that our uh, total increase, like I said, 5.68. Yes. Um, I want to um, mention the uh, training line that went up six, almost 61 percent. I had talked to you the other day and I think the analogy that you made to me was the um, was like a Patriots game. Sure. They train together. Sure. Not, you know, they don't train individually That's because right. 
you work together as a team when you respond to a fire. So, Absolutely true. So that I thought was a very good analogy. Um, the radio uh, line that went up 21.47 percent. So the the um, those pages that you're talking about. Correct. Um, they when when the they tone out an alarm, they make a beeping noise yep. to wake you That's up true. at night or something yep. like that, right? That's correct. Yeah. I yeah. and those are those are ten years old. Older. 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 And Some the, of them are 17. And, but the other radios that you're replacing are 10 years old? So, no, they're 16 years old. So we have several radios. As you might imagine, we have backup to backup, right? Um, but our primary radios are, are functioning radios in the trucks. They're called mobiles. The mobiles that we operate on on a daily basis are 16 years old. Our backup radios are a different breed. Uh, one's Motorola, one's Kenwood, so we're working on getting it all to the same radio as well. Um, when, when our two new vehicles came in, we purchased an upgraded radio, the new radio, that's compliant with P25, it's federal compliance, um, and it's also uh, capable of handling digital uh, signals as opposed to just analog. The, the older Motorola's that we're looking to replace, the old Astros, they're just simply out of date. It's like having a tube television um, when you're, you know, most people have a flat screen. Nobody's servicing them anymore. So this is 17 years old. That's that actually, I, I put in for an AFG grant that we did not receive, um, and I do believe that it was mostly based on the fact that the federal government will replace 17-year-old radios because they've filled up the entire 16-year lifespan. When I did it, it was 15 years. So, so, so you're, using, you're still using analog radios? Yeah. So Seacoast Fire is still on analog? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I thought perhaps you know, everybody had gone digital. I know the, for the fire service, there was a, a problem initially when the digital technology came out. Um, you know, digital packets, right? Ones and zeros. And if the message is sent on an analog system and part of it's garbled, part of it's, uh, you know, you can't hear it, most of the message might still get through. In a digital system, that message might go out and it never re reaches the receiver. You don't get any part of that. So for a while, there was some communication problems that had resulted. Um, the technology has certainly changed and the, the reliability has increased. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so does anybody have any questions for the chief? If you do, raise your hand, please. David? I have two questions. <clears throat> one you just discussed for the second time, and that had to do with training, which I think is a wonderful idea, and I understood the Pats have said But you didn't train as teams before, is that what I'm understanding? We didn't have dedicated off-site training. So currently, as you might imagine, um, we do training every day. Okay. The groups will train, whether it's throwing ladders, um, practicing CPR. Uh, today they were in-house, the entire group was in-house watching the, the PowerPoint presentation before they went out and trained on cutting up the vehicles. Uh, but with on-duty training, if there's a medical aid call, if there's a fire alarm activation, they all leave. So hiring an outside instructor or having people, especially our newest people who are typically on the ambulance, going to the first out ambulance call, they leave very valuable training, and so they're required to get it back piecemeal. Uh, what I'm trying to, what I'm aiming to do with this is take the entire group on a day off and say, this is your dedicated training now. You're gonna go here, they'll, they'll be paid overtime, or I'll have to cover their shift one way or the other. But they're going to go off site and they're going to train, whatever it might be, the myriad of skills that are perishable uh, for firefighting. And they'll go train, they'll be off site as an entire group and they won't be disturbed. Understood. Thank you. Yes. The other question I had was the original one was the diesel was up like sixty six percent, something number like that. Yeah, since we got the WEX system, they the that tracks and it fluctuates with the price of diesel a lot Just closer. So diesel has diesel fuel like almost doubled in the last year compared to last year? No, but our uh, our usage is up. So, you know, we're, we're doing a lot more calls. So when those trucks are on the road, these are fuels is getting used. Any reason for the more calls? Is it the same population, the weather? No, well, you know, it's funny, and, and obviously aside from the topic, but um, last year, if you talk to the businesses, they'll tell you that their businesses, especially at the beach, were off. And they were off by a certain percentage. And it depends on who you speak with, but they'll say anywhere from 20 to 25%. And some of that's a high number. Some people will say 16 or low or whatever. Uh, our call volume was off about 7%, 7 to 8%. But if we look at 20% volume loss in the corporate world, right. the business world, retail, and only a 9% loss in us, net, we've actually still gaining calls. 
and we're our calls we're averaging about 4,400 calls a year. So that's up over the last two and three years. We continue to see a, an upward rise. More fires, more, more everything. More, more everything. You know, we're a lot busier than we used to be. Um, our average um, EMS run right now, I think we're doing 2,300, a little over 2,300 calls a year for for ambulance calls. Uh, we do send a fire engine to assist on some of those fire alarm uh, activations. We have a lot more buildings now that are protected by fire alarms, which cause us to go out and inspect them. And also, if there's if somebody burns food or if there's a smoke detector activation, sprinkler systems. We've had some rough winter weather in the last two years, where down at the beach, especially where the, the businesses are uh, vacant during the winter season um, and not heated necessarily, or especially in, in areas that aren't, sprinkler systems will fail. We're running to those calls quite a bit. So as we become much more code compliant and safer, we're also experiencing different problems with an increased run call. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, Bob. Are you satisfied all the safety equipment is state of the art that you're using? I would like to see the radios come up with the compliance. We're working on that, but uh, as far as everything else goes, I am. Um, you'll also note too in here in this budget I have uh, part of my program placement is four sets of gear per year per firefighter. In 2009 we received a grant for 33 sets of gear and um, we've been working since 20, well, 2015 I think right mm -hmm. to replace gear. We're, we did a, a block of six units of gear that year and then four each year thereafter because after 10 years the gear is no longer reliable and they, they take it out of service. In 2019 that comes up. So we're getting everybody a new set of gear. Another goal for safety though, Mr. Ladd, is that I would like to see everybody have a second set of gear. As you know, cancer is driving uh, driving force in our world right now, and firefighters are experiencing it at rates that are unprecedented. Um, what we would like to do is have everybody who goes out to a fire come back, wash their gear, and then still have a second set so they can respond to calls. So I'm working on that. So the radios and the gear, I think, are my two primary safety issues right now that I'm working on. Uh, I had one other kind sure. of general question. Do you keep records of where each medical call in particular is made, uh, whether there's transport to the hospital, whether there's insurance, whether the call is for a resident? We do. And yeah, and that's in, that's in conjunction with our third-party billing service, Comstock. So they have the database that we're able to monitor. What happens to the recoveries in the from the billing service when insurance pays for the ambulance rides. There's a there's a um, enterprise fund that was set up and it's cool. we refer to it as Fund 27. It's for the emergency services. Um, that that particular account pays for the ambulances, pays for the cardiac monitors, all of the supplies, band aids, IVs, um, IV supplies for tubing and whatever else. Uh, it also pays for the EMS officers' full salary and retirement. Uh, it pays for all of the incentives for the paramedics and the AEMTs, and it pays for all of the equipment like a new stretcher. I was in front of the Board of Selectmen uh, about six weeks ago requesting the purchase of a power load stretcher and uh, power cot. That's a new system to help us raise people into the back without having to do the lift. Um, you know, these cots now are very high tech, but it's also eliminating injuries for us, which is tremendous. Um, all of that is coming out of Fund 27. That's what's driving that. And my final question I was at a meeting earlier today, and the state said there were 21 major medical events at the beach this summer on the beach. It's my understanding, are they medical events of a nature you would respond to? They were talking about lots of things where the lifeguards took care of it. Sure. We had several we had several cardiac arrests on the beach this year. Obviously, that, the cardiac arrest is the, the main serious call, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we had several of the several cardiac arrests um, that the lifeguards were certainly instrumental on. They did a tremendous job, worked in conjunction with the firefighters, brought them up to, and then transported. Um, there's also been whether it's uh, anaphylactic reactions or difficulty breathing. Uh, as you might imagine, especially in the beginning of the season, there's a lot of people who are inexperienced beachgoers and alcohol drinkers, and those two don't mix. We see them. So there's, there's an awful lot of stuff that happens down there. The 21 major, I couldn't take them off all by... by no, I, I was just wondering, is that a reasonable number, your responses to uh, medical incidents on the beach itself? Uh, on the sand. Yeah. But there's all kinds of property that we call the beach, right? So whether it's parking lots or the road in front, if this car accident on Ashcore, uh, to us, we're still at the beach. 
So there's a lot of different variety there when it comes to that. But as far as medical events on the sand, yeah, I think that would be okay. That would that would be rather accurate. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else with a question for the chief? Sonny? Yeah. Um, I'm coming at it a little differently. I'm not looking to nickel a dime here or, or anything like that. I'm looking. The total budget goes up. 2.9%, 2.97, almost 3%. The residents, a lot of residents in the town are on fixed income, right? There are a number of them are totally depend on Social Security. The way the Social Security system is working, Social Security gave you a 2% increase this year, okay? The 2% increase disappeared in the health insurance. Okay, we don't know what the Part D, the prescription drugs are going to be, but it looks like they're going to hit us with a 9% increase, okay? What I'm looking at is, from the voters, from the residents' point of view, they look, if their income is not going up, how are they going to, you know, I'm afraid you're going to end up with a default budget. I understand. Um, what I can tell you, and, and to address the, the question about more call volume, our call volume is rising, um, but we are we have two businesses under one house. We have obviously fire suppression and emergency medical services. Yeah. <coughs> under the fire suppression side, we are working diligently with fire prevention to make safer buildings, but there's still fires. Whether they're in our community or, or others, we're we're assisting other communities because we don't have the, yeah, well, the need, right? You understand that simple. mutually. Yeah. But we have fires. We do have fires. So the fire suppression side, we're protecting a great deal of property. This year, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Tinker told us is about three point five five billion, sir. Is that right? So we're protecting three three point five five billion dollars worth of property, and we haven't added firefighters in well over ten years. So we're doing it with the same staff. On the emergency medical services side, and to your point, Mr. Kravitz, uh, you know, we do have an aging population. And I think if we look at Hampton, it's one of the highest aging populations in the state of New Hampshire. Um, collectively, we see that uh, as people age, they require more medical services. Additionally, we do have a large influx down at the beach, and it's not just the sand. It's if people go to the bars, they go enjoy the, the hotels and all the other things that Hampton has to offer. We have a large increase in the summertime well, we see more call volume. People are coming to use us and, and our services are there. Well, so Most of that money goes to the state. <laughs> I can't speak to that. 600000 back, right? Sure. What I can tell you is that as a, as a result of the increasing age, the increasing problems that come along with population, and to this, and we didn't discuss it yet, but the opiate problem, and I know that you and I had a conversation earlier this evening about that, um, we're seeing that. It's, it's here. So we're responding to more calls, more serious calls, and, and that's definitely, I, I definitely feel and understand what you're saying, um, but that, that same coin is also driving us to do more work. Yeah, I know. The other thing I was looking at was the 2.1 in wages. Whoever does the payroll must go, the hair must turn current. I'm 2.1? How many total, total employees, around 40 some odd? For me, 46. Huh? 46 the fire department. 46 month. total. And you know, the way the fine print of the contract drives people crazy, I'm sure. So. Well, it is a published document. Yeah. No, that's a union negotiation. I don't Right. I understand that. All right. That's really all I. Thank you, Sonny. Anybody else? I have a question. Oh, Danielle, please. So you said that every firefighter should have a second set of safety equipment for their own health purposes? Turn up here, we call it, right? You see how, us in our jackets. Yeah, our how yep. close are you to that? For a second set? Yeah. Not very. Uh, just Why? so that you understand the cost of that, uh, to get a, a coat, pants, boots, and a helmet, uh, no helmet. Three thousand dollars, no helmet, right? Yeah, a little bit over. Yeah, a little bit over. For three thousand dollars, we're going to have it, a jacket, pants, and boots. A helmet now, um, you'll see in, actually, if you look in there, it says $611. It's gone up at $740 for a leather helmet, which okay. is what we provide. Um, the gloves are $58, and so are hoods. Every one of our firefighters now has two hoods, so that if they come back, they can just wash. And I don't have to tell anybody in this room, you know that we experienced a, a line of duty death as a result of cancer for Kyle Jamison. Uh, we're diligent about washing our gear. 
but the second set, we don't necessarily have that for everybody. Uh, we don't have that. Not it seems necessarily to me that that should be a priority. It is. It's just yeah. it's it, it's cost extensive. Priority. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else, then, Danielle? Okay, uh, Steve. I was going to pretty much relate uh, what Danielle had said about as far as the equipment goes. You know, I mean, I've read the uh, surveys. I'm sure everybody else has, and seen all the increase in cancer and everything across the country with firefighters. So it is important that we get a uh, program together, and it's got to be soon. You know, not not later, not two years from now. We need to get it going now in order to uh, decrease that number. And secondly, as far as the training goes, I know over the last few years, talking to different groups of firefighters. You know, one of the things they've said to me is they're not getting enough training. There isn't enough out there. So the fact that this new program, I know it's 59% uh, increase, but it's a small number. And then, you know, if that saves lives by getting these guys out there and train, it's been a big thing that they've, uh, you know, they've said to me, hey, training is uh, something we find important, but we're not getting enough. So I think it's a great program, and hopefully this all goes through. And the cancer thing is huge, so we have to do something about that in the very near future. So yeah. sir, I agree. Okay, anybody else? Brian? First off, let's start this at the beginning. How many people are you short now? I'm not. So for the first time that I sit before you uh, since I've been here, we are fully staffed. So what that means is that every day begins at 9. However, we do something called running down, just so that you understand. Um, we have a captain here at headquarters, a lieutenant at the beach, and then there are seven firefighters on duty. So if there's one firefighter that's out, uh, each, each one of the officers, the captain and lieutenant, if they're out, they're covered by another officer. Um, if a firefighter is out sick, vacation, injured, or whatever, uh, training, then that, that first slot, we don't fill. So that's a vacancy during the day. So they'll run at eight for the day instead of nine. Um, but otherwise, all of the positions are now filled. Fantastic. It really is. <coughs> We've got um, some high quality candidates, I'm so proud. Oh, yeah. I'm proud of you guys, believe me. Um, I know you monitor all the signs and street lights. Do you yep. also take care of the, like the new signs, with, like speed limit signs, and things that? Like I believe that? Chief Sawyer has been uh, dedicated to. Okay, true, Chief. Yeah, glad to do it, Chief Sawyer. Happy, happy to back that bus. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, anybody else? First round. Okay, Sonny, second yeah, round. I, have, I mentioned the fireman who spoke <coughs> for the anti Democrats on the open. Right. Yeah. I gather EMS is, keeps busy with how many of the overdose calls? To date, I, I, I couldn't tell you how many overdoses. We were at 40, I believe, the last time I spoke to the Board of Selectmen. Um, we are currently at eight overdose fatalities as a result of fentanyl, um, which is, uh, it's a synthetic drug. Um, it, we, we definitely have an issue here in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we're not the highest community by any stretch of the imagination. We're about middle of the road, which is still not a designation that we like to accept, but it's it's something that our yeah, upper well, right to, to, to make it worse. Um, it's, it's, it's not just the beach, it's everywhere. The entire community is affected. Uh, another question. Town like Exeter, about the same size. What's their fire budget compared to ours? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I, I honestly don't know. I haven't talked to the chief. Uh, I just They're similar, but they they have some major differences. They're only they're staffed at five per day. Um, I do know that, and they have one fire station. They also do not have a seasonal influx. They don't have the events that we have or any of the, the need as far as that goes. We we still remain, and if I'm not mistaken now, as a result of the, the changes that have occurred at the Weirs, Hampton remains um, the, the conflagration risk for the state of New Hampshire. So the beach, as you know from historic you know times, uh, fire happens, and when it does, in communities that are so, where buildings are so close to each other, uh, they, that's a real big problem. The population density and the buildings down at the beach remain a conflagration risk. We are working to make them more co-compliant with sprinkler systems and early detection smoke detectors, but that 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 threat remains. All set, Sonny? Yeah, all right. Anybody else with any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. How many of the 45 have second, second um, gear? I don't know. 
Can you get us that? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That way, if we could get have that, that would be great. Sure. Okay. Anyone else? Tim? Yes. Uh, I think Jenny makes a good point. We'd like to know what the going forward risk is on that. I'll uh, have sure. to replace this. <laughs> But that, that equipment is very personal, right, to each firefighter? Yes, absolutely. So we need to be sure that we can't just take the equipment and say, oh, it's good for 10 years, because that person as an employee may not be here for 10 years, right? That's true. Okay, uh, but you. however, to, to that uh, point, Mr. Jones, we have hired some people who, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing pants that were not sized for me. They were just, you know, but I, I'm not doing what the firefighters do. Like they said. The, these are, yeah. <laughs> <It's teasing. laughs> but uh, in general, there, there was some spare gear. And we would use that um, if, if a new firefighter came in, they were issued spare gear. And there was actually a firefighter who's been here now for five years. I, I was fortunate enough to hire him, who just got his first <coughs> set of issued gear last last week. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yep. so when we look at that, they, he was in a set of borrowed gear for five years. Um, but there were other people who really needed to get their gear replaced. Um, gear is good for 10 years according to the NFPA standard. However, if you are experiencing high heat due to fire, you'll have changes that need to have that replaced. Um, crawling around on your hands and knees damages the gear. It's very tough. It's made of Kevlar and Nomex, but it, glass still tears it and, you know, the wear and tear. Sunlight, UV light, will actually cause the fibers to break down. So we've got a maintenance thing that we're working on, and we are trying to get everybody a set of new gear. Now, the main reason they brought it up was to point out that it wasn't a simple numerical calculation to figure right. out what our going forward uh, cost would be because of these variants. Uh, but it would be nice if we get it, but I think there's so many variants that we may not be able to get a rational number. So. Um, <coughs> I noticed you spoke about um, what you refer to as Fund 27, and um, that was related to funding all of the EMS stuff, right? Correct. So all of the EMS stuff paid out of Fund 27. Training, the EMS officer's uh, car, the EMS officer's salary, all of that. Yeah. So nothing in your budget was related to EMS? Um, most of the funding comes from 27. I don't believe there's any items in here that we pay for EMS. So it's a very clean line of demarcation between the functions. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, budgetarily, yes. Right. Well, yeah. right. That's what we hear about. Yeah. Right. This is money. Right. <laughs> yeah, the money is good, clear you. demarcation <laughs> to it. Right. Uh, I know operationally it doesn't necessarily, but money-wise it does, and that's great. I appreciate that. But I am confused because there's another fund out there in the world called Fund 2017, I believe, which is the Fire and Police Detail Fund. 26. Is it 26? Okay, thank you. Can't remember those numbers, but I can remember the names. So the Fire and Police Detail Fund is a same similar fund to 27, except for it deals with fire and police details, right? Uh, true. Okay. But the but, funding mechanism so I find it odd <coughs> that uh, in your budget you have a detail. Uh, wages in here when it seems to me that that should be drawn out of the uh, fire and detail budget. So you, it's, it's, detail. Labeled, it's labeled detail, fireworks mm -hmm. detail, because mm -hmm. we detail a firefighter to the to that location for a duration. Um, but the Board of Selectmen, this was, a, this was a result of negotiations between the Hampton Beach Precinct, Board of Selectmen, they decided... Village District. Village, thank you. Um, the fireworks sponsored by the, the precinct. Village District. Yep. Um, I like precinct. <laughs> yeah, but legally it's I called the too. village district. So the village district. I'd like to call it something else, but legally it's the village district. Great people. Um, so they they sponsor the, the Wednesday fireworks, the um, the holiday fireworks. We have one more shoot coming up on New Year's Eve. Uh, that fireworks show was it was always covered with overtime. There was never a line item. Well, mm -hmm. three years ago we looked at that, and um, it was decided that we were going to be charging any vendors that came in. The outside vendors were Seafood Fest. Seriously, they they, the, they were the only vendor other than the, the village district. So there was a discussion with the board of selectmen and the village district to keep that in the budget, and that's why that line item exists. So it can pay for the firefighters to go down there and work. But we call it a detail. It's not a paid detail similar to what you're talking about with the 26 fund. It's not a <coughs> private vendor detail, which the 26 fund is, is private vendors funded. As opposed to a public vendor. Well, as opposed to a budget line item. Right. Well, you, you seem to emphasize the word private in your private. Venue. Verizon, somebody somebody like that. Right. They're paying for it. So it's private and public, and it's a detailed 26 fund. But you've got a separate line item here, and, or a sub-line item. Actually, it's not a line item, it's a sub-line item. Yeah. 
And I, I just want to note that in 2016, you had zero budgeted for it. 2017, you had 7,500 budgeted for it. <coughs> and this year, you're going up to 8,000 for it. And you're saying is that subline item is entirely dedicated to the village district fireworks. Correct. Okay. So that's basically underwriting a function of the village district operations. It's underwriting a function of the fire department. But where the, the fire village department. district in order to have fireworks needs to have the fire department there. That's part of the expense of the, the right. And that's fine. Right. But it is an underwriting of their operation. In my mind, I'm not asking a question. I'm making a statement. Radio maintenance <coughs> continues to go up and continues to be confusing to me that we're wor working on what appears to be increasingly obvious <coughs> ancient equipment. I'd like to see something done about that maybe maybe next year or whatever. Me but, too. Yeah. So that you understand, um, uh, we've been working in conjunction with the police department on this too because in 2018 there are going to be some changes coming about. So we're working hard on making sure that we have current equipment. Yeah, I particularly enjoy the radio maintenance topic with the police every year. So. I'm, sure. I'm sure Rich is looking forward to it again this year. That was on my bus, sir. Very cool. Bus, sir. <laughs> Building maintenance is up 17 plus percent. Um, yeah, as I described, we now have an agreement with uh, Palmer Scott for heating and cooling, which we didn't have for a maintenance agreement, plus our generators need to be yeah, placed. I want to ask you about customers. those generators. Are those are new generators. What did you do with the old generators? The old generator that we had only at the Winniconnick Road Station okay. um, was brought to DPW and is now powering, and I don't know if the sewer plant or wherever it went, but it went down there. So it's actually working for us down at the sewer plant. So we guys. should ask the DPW about that, and that's fine. Sure. Thanks. It's a, it was a used generator. That, it was a 60 kW, I believe, that they took down there. Yeah. Um, the one out of the beach fire station was an ancient relic that was it was really an, just an engine that somebody had really rewired. So that I don't think that made it through demolition, to be honest with you. So it was demolished? Probably. <laughs> uh, the new generators, are they natural gas, diesel, or gasoline? Water? They're diesel, both. Diesel. Yeah. Did you consider natural gas? I'm just curious. Uh, that was before my time. I was hired the time okay. that the fire stations came online. Thank you, Chief. Okay. I appreciate the uh, the, uh, the accounting and the detailed pages on your on your budget. This year seems to be a little bit more uh, robust than previously. I appreciate that. Sure. And uh, I thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Sunny again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good question. Normally, if there's a fire in Southampton. You get called. Rye, you get called. Right. Is there any regional cooperation in, in buying the equipment? So typically, no. Um, <coughs> equipment ages, as you might imagine. And as I've spoken to you, what we're trying to do is maintain the the frontline equipment ten years, and then ten years in reserve. Um, we're not on the same cycle as other communities. And our use rate is certainly higher than Northampton or Southampton. Um, when we get into that, there's there's no um, consortium buying either. So what we do instead is we look at buying off of uh, state bid lists. So it's the lowest possible price, and that's what we're doing to, to purchase. But there's no no means to do a consortium bid. <coughs> All set, Sonny. Okay. Anybody else? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor with a second. But as I pointed out at the beginning, the final number um, could very well change, um, and we'll know that shortly. So, what is the wish of the committee? Do you wish to uh, vote on this number that we have now? Well, what changes is speculative. I think we should just vote on it and move on. If there's changes proposed subsequently, All right. we can vote on those changes. All right. So we have a motion on the floor and second. All those in favor? Uh, can I ask you, please, what is the exact amount of the motion? Tim, you made the motion. It's, it's, on, it's on the video. $3,747,014. Is that right, Christy? Kristen? Somebody else. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor? Raise your hand. Uh, I see most everybody. All those opposed? And Sonny is abstaining. Everybody else voted yes. 
Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you all so much. Have a great okay. night. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Certainly. Chief and Deputy Chief. Thank you both. Okay, now we have the police department. Okay, let me see if I can find that. Here we are. Mr. Chairman, if I may make the motion for the... Uh... Yes, sir. Please, I move $4,358,416. Any second? Steve? Second. Uh, Brian, we'll let Brian second that. Motion made by Tim. Good evening to you, sir, both sirs. Great to see you again. Yes, nice to see you again as well tonight. Short rest for some of us that were down at the <laughs> wonderful meeting down at the State Park. Yep, that was a very good meeting. Yeah, very, very good so meeting. Don't say that with any sarcasm. I met that. They did a nice job. It was a good season. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, they do, a, they want to do a wonderful job. Chief, if you'd follow the same format as the fire chief, go through your entire budget, and then after you've finished, then we'll ask questions, okay? <coughs> that way, Mr. Chairman. What I'm going to highlight is the significant change. I'm going to start with the increase in total budget, which you'll see is 6.29 mm -hmm. increase from last year. The majority of that is going to be uh, contractual obligations, primarily wages. As you may recall, uh, the town entered into a collective bargaining agreement with the Hampton Police Association. They call for 3% raises over three consecutive years. We're now in the second year of that contract. So that would account for a vast majority of what you see of that 6.29% increase. Going through the different uh, areas of the budget, uh, one of the things we tried to accomplish this year, we've been talking about it, um, about cons consolidating some lines. If you remember last year, we took the gasoline lines, we had three gasoline lines throughout the budget for patrol, uh, detectives, and administration. Really didn't serve a, a, any legitimate purpose. Um, the run rates don't vary that much. The prices may, but the run rates don't. So we made the determination to consolidate that line for expediency. There's, there was really no reason to have three lines for that. Uh, I tried that again this year uh, with the vehicle maintenance. With the fleet that we have, I didn't really feel that it mattered whether it was a marked unit or an unmarked unit in admin or detectives, maintenance is maintenance. When the cars break down, we have to fix them, so we just consolidated those lines. So you'll see vehicle maintenance under crime control is uh, zeroed out. You'll see vehicle maintenance under uh, administration uh, significantly increased. It's simply the consolidation. It's, we took the three line items, put them into one, put them into one place. Just felt that that was a cleaner look and uh, didn't, I don't believe it diminishes the transparency of the budget. That's kind of what I, I felt I was getting from uh, budget committees in the past, and we didn't need these things everywhere. Uh, every year I look at the budget and I'm, I'm looking at it right now. There's some areas that I'll probably in the future look to consolidate. I just want to be sure that we're ready for that consolidation. So when you look at administration, uh, you have a 13.45 increase. Uh, we did some work on the OT wages. That is due to overtime for administration personnel, uh, summer prosecutor's office support records, uh, some computer development repair reflects pay for officers assigned to develop and repair the computer system. That was based on six hours uh, per week of average overtime rate. We maintain most of our system with folks inside the building, and they are in variable, various places within the department. So instead of paying overtime out of those varying depart, uh, areas of the department, we just want to consolidate the money that we're spending on that area because it's becoming a very big concern, not only in the department, but in the town. IT is a big topic, and you know we want to try to get as accurate as we can with what we're spending in that area. Um, primarily for the future. So those are the two biggest increases that you see in administration. You do see some uh, reductions, uh, rentals and leases. We knocked that down significantly. Um, 
due to some consolidation and movement around uh, of the money into other accounts. 93% up on the computer supplies and expenses. We're trying to be more accurate uh, based on what we're spending out of those lines. Um, <coughs> that is really it in those areas. As far as, did you want to go section by section or with the entire budget? Do the entire budget, please. Okay. Traffic control and patrol is only up. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Crime control and investigation. I'm sorry. I think you skipped that. <coughs> Crime control and investigations, 1.44%. We did a, a little bit of a look at uh, a couple of items like our OT wages, just looking at what we were spending and try to be a little more accurate, so we, uh, we did cut that slightly. Um, it says 22.9%. It's, it's really a dollar number that's not that significant. 30% up in career incentives. Those are contractual obligations. It shows up 30%, but it's really not a big numerical number. And that really accounts for, uh, in the minus 100 is the rentals and leases, uniform allowance, and new equipment, which was a consolidation. All those are consolidation issues. Good. So, traffic control and patrol. Traffic control and patrol is up 1.8 biggest areas of change, you'll see a 28% increase in sick leave. I was just looking at uh, what we're spending in that area, and it, it does fluctuate quite a bit as the, the usage goes. You know, we have a, a flu bug that hits the building like the schools, and everybody's out, and that could drop significantly this year. It all depends on the run rate, so I just try to adjust that to reflect somewhere in the ballpark of what we used over the last couple of years. Vacation coverage up 70.7%, same issue. Holiday pay is a contractual issue. Career, career incentives, 15.9. Career incentives are those uh, issues when somebody gets a degree. <coughs> there's a stipend that's paid, and that's what that reflects. Minus 41% uh, for personal days. Again, just looking at the run rates as to how people use their time. Uh, some people just didn't use them. They don't use them, they lose them, but that happens from time to time. Consultants, uh, we consolidated, so that was minus 100%. That was only $250. Vehicle maintenance, again, we, we merged. <coughs> Replacement equipment, uh, just looking at what we were spending. And we do get some opportunities for donations from other entities, so we're utilizing that a lot. So we're down 29% in that. Vehicle replacement, uh, minus 34%. Training and recruitment, we zeroed that out. We consolidated uh, that line. Oh, pardon me, we left that even. And that's all for traffic uh, control. And again, that's 1.8 increase. Right. Training. Training uh, is a significant bump and that's due to consolidation. Things we're going to do in training. We're trying to just, again, taking some of the line, like the detectives training, we, we that's really specialized so we left that in there, but the administrative training and the patrol training and the stuff we do with the special officers, we're trying to keep that more into one, uh, one area. Services. Support service is up 10.35%. Biggest areas you're going to see are the training wages. And keep in mind with the contract increases, that also increases the wages for those areas. Uh, and we've added some training. We're also you know, dealing with the more continuous level of training simply because of the turnover rate we experience with our special officers that many of these folks are coming in with less life experience, fewer people in the military, it does cause us to have to do more training with them. 
support wages, uh, just a reflection, a little bit uh, more in line with what we're spending. Uniform pay, that's a contractual obligation. Vacation coverage you'll see is up 48.9. That's just a reflection of what we're seeing <coughs> over our time period. Radio maintenance, Tim's favorite product. Worksheet on that, so. <coughs> One of the big things we've added is our portable radios. Uh, we are still carrying some of the first generation digital radios that can no longer be maintained. So as those die out on us, we can't get them replaced or repaired with the same radio. So we want to institute a program of buying six new portable radios at a cost of $3,000 each, each year, similar to what we do with the cruisers. When we buy the cruisers, we also buy a new computer. About three years, they start becoming obsolete. We start having failures with them. So we buy a new computer when we buy the new car. We want to get into a program of buying six new radios just so we can stay ahead uh, with the radio so we're not buying these the last second and having to wait on them. We have them in our inventory as the old ones start to fail. PD uniform allowance is 12.5. That's contractual. Uh, supplies and expenses, you'll see mine's 100%. We consolidated in there. Training and recruitment is 75.84. Part of the items we want to start this year is we are planning on trying to start a Citizens Academy and an Explorer Post. We look at those items as potentially a way to try to enhance our recruitment efforts. Uh, I'd like to see more local people coming into, the, into our department. I think that bodes well for the community, but how do we do that? Um, I think the Citizens Academy would be just bringing the ordinary taxpayer to come in and get an understanding of what your police department does and give them a little taste of the day in the life of what we do. The Explorer Post is the uh, young adults, um, kind of similar. We've had some discussions with the ROTC program at Winnicott, trying to marry up them with them a little bit because we think that's kind of the same demographic we may draw on young adults that are interested in maybe a public safety career and trying to uh, help each other out in that area and uh, the colonel's been very open to those discussions as has the high school so that's the uh, increase you're seeing in the training recruitment so that accounts for the 10.35 increase increase in support services police station and building 23.4 percent increase and the building maintenance is probably that biggest area I've added uh, I believe it's forty thousand dollars to that account uh, simply put every year for the last, since I've been chief we experience some failure of a key component of the facility uh, be it HVAC airflow handlers gates lights the buildings 12 years old we're in a, in a salt water environment and we have been experiencing uh, those failures. You know, we'll, we'll get a bill for twelve to fifteen thousand, thirty thousand, depending on what it is. So I'd rather have money set aside for that, a contingency for that, as opposed to hoping that we have money left over because it was a wet and cold summer and we didn't spend a lot of money. Uh, I just rather have a, a plan to have those things dealt with when they become obsolete. I can't give you a projection of when that's going to happen. I just know since I've become chief, it seems that every component is starting to fail. It's 12 years old and that's what you start seeing when those failures start happening. So, And that is our budget proposal at 6.39. Okay. I want to uh, mention that you're talking about building maintenance. It doesn't seem like it's possible. It was 12 years ago that that uh, building was built. Well, that, you know, I, we have to give a lot of credit to Bill Gay. Okay, And, and it's one of the things I'd really like to highlight uh, through the process here is very, you know, we get a lot of accolades for the work we do, and we have an outstanding police department. I would argue it's the best police department in the state of New Hampshire. But that doesn't happen without some of the folks like Bill Gay, Pete McKinnon, who retired. Uh, we just lost Marsha Hess, those people uh, that are the support mechanism. So the police officers can go out and do the police work. 
um, and come back to a building that's clean, uh, a booking room that's clean because of the, the, the hazmat issues we have or the cruises. These people do miraculous work and they just don't get enough credit for it, but that's why that building works as good as it does 12 years later. And I'd, I'd like to say that um, maintaining the, the two wonderful new fire stations, maintaining the police department, I would rather you maintained it than uh, the issue that we have, for instance, with the wastewater treatment plant, is, which is something that we're going to get to next the next time we meet. But I'd rather the public buildings are maintained properly, you know. The, um, the other thing I wanted to mention, under administration with um, computer supplies, there was a line about, um, let me go back here, something that I saw that caught my, my eye, under computer support, um, annual internet service website, email, DSL connection, you're using DSL? No, no, I'm sorry. A lot of these light items, as we said, as Tim has pointed out, don't accurately reflect sometimes because things get put into a line, and as we work through it, no, it's not a DSL connection. Okay, I didn't think so. I mean, that DSL is like, that, that would be very old. Um, what is it? DSL? Well, I know what DSL is. <laughs> what is it if it's not DSL? I know it's not DSL. <laughs> Tim, as we know, I'm not a tech guy. Uh, I can find out for you, get back to you what the connection is. Through, uh, yeah, and you can update guys. this template, so next year we won't ask the question again. Yeah. Thank you. Every year I'm cutting <laughs> a little bit out that you, that you go Every year you. we add a little bit of help for you, right? And I get rid of a lot. <laughs> Keep the eight tracks out. <laughs> I had one other thing under um, training. And... Um, First, I have to find it in here. Anybody know what page that's on? Training. 26. Oh, yeah. <coughs> okay, okay. Um, I just wanted to mention a training and recruitment, and then it lists in the book on page 27 um, the, the amount of, um, of just, I thought it was astounding, the cases of uh, ammunition for training. You know, you, you guys go through a lot of lead, huh? We do. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, let me explain that to you. We are required, each officer in the state of New Hampshire is required by police stands and training to qualify once a year. That is an incredibly substandard, in my opinion. I get why they do it, because they're the governing body for the entire state. That includes the smallest de department up north that you can think of, all the way to Manchester State Police, South Salem, and the bigger departments. It's not sufficient, in my opinion. Uh, and the other thing you got to remember is there's a high turnover rate in law enforcement across the country. And many of the people coming in have never use the firearm in their life. So that takes a considerable lot more training and some, what was the term we would use for that with people that are struggling? <coughs> Retraining or uh, more one-on-one -on -one time with an instructor as opposed to being lined up with six other officers. We're trying to really work with the people that are coming into the field and it's a, it is a different group of people these days. It's just, that's not good or bad, it's just the way it is. So they do need more one-on-one -on -one time. They do need more time on the range and more acclimation to firearms because they just don't have that uh, in their previous life. I guess the uh, the other thing that I noticed going through this line by line, the 60 cases of handgun training ammunition is different than the uh, duty the, the duty ammunition. Yes, what that is is the fa uh, it's a less of a standard ammo. The ammo that you get, uh, if you went to, into a store to carry in your own handgun, there's all kinds of different uh, ammo that's available. We use an, an, an ammo that we believe is ballistically sound for our purposes as law enforcement, whereas the target ammo is what could be considered, what the military would refer to as a ball round. <clears throat> so when you go to a military training, the ammo you may fire through a Training is not the same ammo you may load into your weapon if you're going out into the field into a combat situation. 
greater ballistic penetration uh, with the duty ammo as opposed to a ball round. It's a different ballistics, but it suits the need for punching the hole in the paper and getting the person acclimated and trained to be accurate with it as opposed to the duty round. So that's why the duty round is much more expensive. <laughs> I think it's very interesting. I had a, uh, a friend once that was a policeman in one of the communities, and I said, how often do you fire your gun? Oh, we go through cases of, uh, of ammo. It, 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 I was amazed. I was amazed at how often you end up, you know, using your weapon. Um, you don't have to tell me how many times you... <laughs> but it was quite amazing. It's a, it, it's a liability issue. We have to make sure that the officers are trained properly, accurately, and we've added so much more. We have we have a great group of, of trainers at the PD, quite frankly, that, again, not to brag, they're probably the best in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, the police academy frequently calls upon us to come up and support them uh, through police academy training because of their training and expertise. So uh, it's just one of those things we take that very seriously. Um, it, it's a liability shield for the town to make sure these officers train consistently and that's why. Yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a list of uh, <coughs> these items that you end up buying that, you know, civilians, we don't, I, w I was reading this and I thought, my God, you know, look at all this stuff, rifles and, and uh, bean bags, bean bags that you shoot out of the, all kinds of, this, it's, it's an amazing list of uh, items. Anyway, that's all I have. Anybody have any questions? David? Just a quick one. You said you got to train other at the academy. Yes. Does he have to get paid for that? Reimburse? No, I use I do that as a support to the police academy. I believe it's essential uh, for all of us in the state to make sure that we put out the best police officers we can in the state. It's so right, like a volunteer program. It, it, we, we do assist. it as a cooperative venture with the police academy because the other thing you have to remember is the police academy budget, like everybody's budget, is really tight. And there's no way the police academy could offer the level of training they offer free of charge to communities if it wasn't for communities being willing to send officers up to assist them. It's in Concord. It's on the campus of NHTI. Is the state police involved with that too? State, every police officer in the state of New Hampshire goes and has to be certified to a different entity. It's not part of the Department of Safety. It's not an entity of the state police. It's called the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Council. They are the governing body for all law enforcement in the state for uh, certifications and what that entails. So they run the police academy as a separate entity. Every officer in the state, from fishing game to municipal to sheriffs to state police, goes to the same academy. Thank you. Bob? I'd ask you the same question as the fire chief. Are you satisfied the safety equipment is state of the art and officers? I think we do a, a, a very good job with keeping ourselves current with technology. Um, it's keeping people trained in that technology is the hardest part. Uh, again, we experience the turnover rate, and so we have to spend a considerable amount of our time getting these people up to speed and competent so they can go out and work in one of the, the most challenging law enforcement environments, I would argue, in, the, in all of New England just to see them shortly thereafter leave after one summer or two so we have an old whole new batch of people coming in and again it's just it's not when i came on the job there was a lot of people coming out of the military there was a lot of people with life experience we're because of the competitiveness of officers we hired nine officers part-time officers this year but we're already at negative three okay so i hired three of our part-time officers full-time <coughs> UNH took two, Manchester took two, the Massachusetts State Police took two, two ordinary res resignations, and one that uh, did not meet his probationary period. We just it was not uh, suitable to go forward with this person any further. And one just uh, left last week to say that PD. So actually, I'm at negative four. Even though I hired nine, I'm at negative four in my part time ranks. And that's not going to change for the foreseeable future. So knowing that, it's one of those things we use technology to the best advantage we can, but every time we add technology, it adds training. You remember a couple years ago, we were finally able to get funding to provide tasers to all our part-time officers, which prior it was only full-time that carried them. Today, it's, it's, it's a rarity to see an officer anywhere that's not carrying a taser. 
yet we had more than half of our sworn officers walking around without one in a an environment where we use walking beach we are with the public we are amongst the public more than any other department in the state for a 12-week period not many departments still have walking beach we do uh, just because of the environment we work in so we have to use technology but with technology comes expense of the technology but making the officer competent so I think we do a good job with it I don't there may be some things we're looking at in the future uh, plate readers and stuff for the cruises have now been legalized in a limited fashion in the state so we may be using stuff like that uh, and if we can use technology to offset the lack of officers then we try to do that too and my other question would be as the emergency management director considering how complex emergency management has become have we reached a point where we should have an emergency management committee well under state statute, the town is required to have a, an emergency management director. It can often have a committee in support of that, but it can't be, the emergency management function can't be run by a committee. There has to be somebody, um, a chain of command, if you will, to deal with the issues when, it, when anything man-made or natural uh, disaster goes beyond our capacity to handle this community. There has to be somebody that's the primary liaison to the state or federal entities that will come in and support us. So the committee would be helpful in formulating those plans, but we do have a, a, an emergency management team. You know, as we do the radiological drills for the Seabrook plant. It involves me as the emergency management director, the deputy chief then steps into the role as chief of police, the fire chief, uh, a lot of fire support personnel because we're in their building, the radar officers, uh, public works director, the assistant director handle the transportation function. So there's a lot of moving parts to it. There's nothing that says you can't use civilian folks for that. Uh, you see some communities do that. You see some communities have a civilian separate entity emergency management director as opposed to putting it on the hat of somebody in public safety. There's a, there's a school of things we could do. Right now, this is the system we've, had, we've been using for years. I've received no inclination that that's going to change in the foreseeable future, but I guess it's a topic that people could always discuss. I just see the burden on you getting more and more difficult <coughs> because you're getting out of pure public safety in the immediate sense. You're getting into zoning issues and flooding issues evacuation on, on massive scales it's the paperwork that is now becoming um, difficult to manage in that realm prior to 9-11 we had you know New Hampshire emergency management it is now morphed into New Hampshire Homeland Security and emergency management so they have delved into far greater areas such as school safety Schools are now required to have a safety plan that meets a criteria established by New Hampshire Homeland Security and Emergency Management. So we have to get involved with that, not only as the police department and fire department, but also in our emergency management function. Um, any grants or funding or reimbursements, those, anything you get for federal dollars somehow comes attached with something. Okay, if you want highway safety money, have to do certain things that they tell you to do and you may not want to do them as a community but if you want those dollars you have to comply it's kind of similar to why every state in the country has a drinking age of 21 it's not people think it's a federal law it's not a federal law every state has had to enact a statute that mandates the alcohol consumption level to be 21 and if you don't you don't get any federal highway funding the state of Vermont several years ago actually tinkered with going back to 18 because they thought the revenue they'd make from the alcohol sales would be superior to the highway money they get because they're the most rural state in the country as far as highway miles go. So those are the things when you get involved, it's great when somebody says, hey, get a grant or get this money. What I would tell you is there's nothing for free. There's no such thing as free money. It doesn't exist. There's always something that gets you. There's something that you got to comply with and it may not be what your community wants, but if you want the money, you got to do it. So those are the things you got to balance. It just seems like it's too much to expect of you as an individual. I'm not going to get upset if you share that opinion with some <laughs> of the people I work for. I'll be okay with it. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Questions?
Sonny? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, and the administrative overtime is just you, the deputy, and the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Do you want overtime now? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> huh? I can't be on overtime. I didn't think you could. No. That's, that's my question. I'm not on overtime. So who's getting paid all the time? The justice, the prosecutor. Prosecutorial staff um, is overtime for administrative personnel, summer prosecutor's office support records, and then the computer development repair. So again, remember, I don't know if you remember heard what I said is. We have three folks that do most of the work on our computer system in-house. Now, there's times we have to bring out an outside vendor, but most of the stuff we can manage. If the uh, computer goes down, someone can come in and reboot it, get it set back the way it needs to be. But that person needs to be paid. So I just, instead of paying that out of my patrol line or my lieutenant that does it, I wanted to accurately reflect moving forward what our costs are going to be as we try to do improve the IT not only in the police department but throughout the town. IT is a concern that I know they're working on up here at the town office. So I'm just trying to get my numbers in line so I can report back this is what we really spend on our support. Uh, so, so that was the biggest so increase Basically there. when the computers are down. In maintenance. There's certain times there'll be an, a lot of times with the storage system we use which is a system that most of the police departments use in this area in order to be interoperable with them so we can all look at e each other's reports if we're dealing with the same customer, you have to have those uh, those links and patches. So these guys handle all of that in-house as opposed to bringing an out outside vendor. The other aspect is the same thing that I said with the fire department. You know, you're coming at a 6.29 yep. increase. And the residents are not going to have an increase in their income. Well, some will, some won't. No, so I'm concerned about a default budget coming. I have. I, sh the, I share your concern. <laughs> yeah, because you got the DPW with 30 years of problems backing up. I mean, you got a school, the academy being built that's bonded. Mm -hmm. You know, I just see a default budget coming. And, and you, you very well could be right. The only thing I would offer is why I would say to support. You know, I don't know everybody else's budget. I know what we did. Uh, you know, I was very proud of the fact that this is my fourth budget. The first three budgets yeah. I came in with the lowest increases. This year, I think I have the highest. I tried. I was, I, I was good for three years. Honey. I'm sorry. Well, these are the but first two numbers we've seen. To so. your point, you, you make a very good point when you talk about we have all these issues at the wastewater treatment plant coming up. And I think one of the things we ought to really strive to do, and I say this as a taxpayer also, that. You can pay me now or you can pay me later. It seems to be a lot of times in this town over history, when we went for the police station, it literally was falling down around the police officers. Yeah, no, we actually had officers injured because of things falling out of the ceiling and hit them in the head. Well, and I'd like to see that we don't wait till things break down before we do that. So I share your concern about the default. My only thing is there are things that need to be done so we don't run into a wastewater treatment plant I'm issue. I'm not questioning the Nick. No, not, I, I'm yeah. sharing you as a, as a fellow I mean, taxpayer. The, the retirement system, you know, 20 years from now, the, the residents are going to be paying the shortfall because they projected the returns of 8% to 7%. <coughs> Have you read the most recent things on the, on the retirement so. system? Have you read the most recent stuff on the retirement system? I think you'll be, your fears will be alleviated on that one. I think some people fan that to scare the public because they just don't like what we get. Well, the shortfalls aren't what they... You know, the retirement system is based on the liabilities of people's pensions, you know, right. and yeah. they're not contributing, so it's all, the towns can't Absolutely. can't pay it off. All they all have to do is set up a reserve, because, I mean, we're going to have a, probably at least a half a million dollars shortfall. No, I agree with you. those issues are all concerning, but yeah, we, I no, still think we have fine. to maintain a level of service to the taxpayer, and I think that's what they'll truly decide and want. Anybody else? Yes. Tim? If I must. Go ahead. You don't have to, Tim. You sure, Rich? Go ahead. Let's go. <laughs> Just so people at home know, we get a uh, book, and in that book we get a bunch of line items and with totals on them, and then we have details that back up those sub-line items. 
<coughs> and it has a total on it. Which one's wrong? Which is wrong? Which one's wrong? That's I don't know. That's my question. The the detailed one, the detailed one has um, twenty seven thousand eight hundred and five dollars more than the one with the subline items. So which one? If you would. Page, page thirty <coughs> reflects twenty seven thousand eight hundred and five dollars more than what we just motioned for. Now, I was seeking out where the potential might be, and I saw there was a, a, a note. Um, What's the difference, though? I just told you. It's $30,000. $27,805. I, I noticed that $30,000 differential, and I, I thought that must be it. And I realized, no, it's the difference is actually $27,805, which is kind of an odd number, literally. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a guess at this. Yeah. That so that's something for maybe yeah, Christy to deal with? Changing. Policy went out and the gas went up. Yeah. Two items. The deputy's right here. He's very good at this. Price of gas, we we altered to adjust to be to what? September's number? Yeah. Which went up. Okay. And we dropped it a thirty thousand dollar line item. That I saw. I'm about to ask you about that in a minute. So that on. was hold a on. hold on that. All right. All right. So, so that's what I believe is the difference. So the number that I moved, Christy, is that not the number that the number I moved is, is $27,805 less. Every year we go in, we get a, the detail part of the budget is what has been submitted by the department head, and that those numbers never change, and that always reflects back the detail and the amount of to Tom Manager. Right. From requested right. to Board of Selectmen and then oh, to Board of Selectmen. Be from okay. requested to the Budget Committee to that's the two budgets. Okay. That's the money right there. Sir. Thank you for that clarification, Christy. I'm sure everyone on the committee noticed that Delta and wanted an explanation. I see your Citizens Academy here. Yeah. I love that name. We named it after you. I love that name. We named it after you. <laughs> <laughs> Did he pay for the naming rights? But the only thing we're going to do there is talk about the radio maintenance budget. How'd you know that was next? Ah, jeez, I don't know, Tim. I'll stab at it. <laughs> okay, so we're replacing six. Let me get there. Hold on. Uh, six twenty-eight. <laughs> Somewhere in your numerous subline items, you have think, something called new equipment, you know? And uh, yeah, there it is. Oh, okay. And there's nothing under new equipment. Yet, under radio maintenance, you've got $18,000 to buy six new portable radios. Yeah. Now, it seems to me buying six new portable radios constitutes new equipment. And it should be under new equipment, not under radio maintenance. Okay. But right. Again. So that's not a question. It's a statement. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to respond to your statement if that's okay with you. Well, no, because I just we went through this last year. and I don't want to go through it again. I, I thought we got to confirm. Well, we're, we're, we're trying, trying to be expeditious. Trying to be expeditious. All right. Go. General maintenance for twelve thousand dollars. If you're buying these new radios, shouldn't the general maintenance be going down rather than simply being maintained? Mm -hmm. You got general maintenance under radio maintenance, twelve thousand dollars. I think you are confusing the portable radios with the radios we have in the building, the main mm -hmm. part of the uh, infrastructure of the radio system that has we have four voter towers. These four voter towers we have in the town or just outside of the town pointing back in, that's more a reflection of that, not the portable radios. What kind of maintenance is required there? Well, we had an issue where recently the water company was painting one of the water towers where we have some of our equipment. Mm -hmm. So in order for them to accomplish that, we had to go in and move our equipment. So we had to pay somebody to do that. Mm -hmm. okay, so stuff like that. Or so something the, water, the, the aquarium needed to, to paint their water towers? It was, it was something they were doing on the water tower that required us to move where our antenna and our apparatus was to support did it. Did you charge them for it? No, Tim, I did not. Okay, I, don't, I don't have the ability to charge the aquarium. That's not under my authority. Also, well, it was a detail. Did you float it up to the authority that could charge them? No, it didn't. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Moving right along, <clears throat> I note that you've got uh, new police cars of three, okay. 20,000 apiece, which includes computers, right? How much did you say? 20? What page are you on, Tim? 26. 26. Thank you. Mm. <coughs> and the vehicle replacements. Yeah. Okay. It seems accurately named, by the way. Thank you. So what is your question? I'm just confirming that you're buying three marked police cars, cruisers. Yes. $28,000. And as you said earlier, when you buy a cruiser, you get a computer with it, right? Yes. So that $28,000 per, per cruiser includes a computer, correct? I think if you look up a little bit, they'll answer your question. Thanks, but equipment. The next, just spread up, Tim. The next. Your placement equipment. The next line up. Cruiser setup installation. Oh, so it does not, it's there 28 thousand does not include no that's about that was last year's state bid price uh -huh. which we believe every indication is the state bid price is going to remain that or just a little bit more. so the twenty eight thousand does not reflect the, the computer. computer no okay no. so if you throw in the computer and blah blah you've got basically uh installation emergency equipment is three thousand that's uh one thousand per cruiser right no Okay. It says three at three thousand. Okay. So, so that means so it's three thousand. Walk over to the right. Okay. Yeah, three thousand. Yeah. And laptop, you got three thousand for you know uh, that. So mm -hmm. that's six. Then you got a cruiser radio, which is another three thousand dollars, which is, makes a total of nine for a cruiser. Mm -hmm. So your per cruiser cost is coming in at uh, thirty-seven. Thank you. For, uh, you're welcome. That's why you're on the school board. Absolutely. <laughs> So you, your actual cost is your actual cost is basically thirty seven thousand yeah. dollars per cruise. And that's one. Yeah. Just want to highlight that. And somehow, uh, well, I don't. I don't know. I shouldn't say somehow because I know exactly how it's happening. You're getting uh, thirty thousand dollars taken out of the fire and police detailed fund, the famous fund twenty six. Fund twenty six. Um, okay. Now we spoke briefly earlier. I just want to drill down a little bit here. You've got. Uh, a line item for consultants here, which was uh, which line are you addressing? Same page twenty six. The consultants okay. uh, you had thirty three and a half thousand for that. It was cut out by thirty thousand by somebody. I assume board of selectmen could have been town manager. I don't know. Um, it says manage administration, so I guess it was town manager. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did the thirty thousand? So you asked for thirty three and a half thousand dollars for consultants. That was your for that one, yeah. Yeah, and thirty thousand for the for the uh, the policy review and update. Right, and time is thirty thousand too much, basically. It's not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do with thirty five hundred? I mean, is thirty five thousand useful to you in any way? That's the remaining amount, thirty five hundred. Well, it, it will be useful in the area of some of the other items that you see listed there: um, seminars, consultant class, provide training seminars. Now, that line item could be far higher but one thing saves us from that is that we host a lot of the regional training yeah. here in Hampton because yeah, of the, the nice building and so when we get those what that saves me is cost of travel and all that good stuff tuition yeah. travel mm -hmm. lodging and food so, so what are we good. by pulling 30,000 out of here what are we not funding what we're not funding is my hope had been to get a uh, an outside entity to come in and take our policies, and that's what they do. They look at policies, and they look at state law and federal law, state case law, federal case law, and develop model policies. Our policies are good, but it's a constant change based on the changes in law and case law. And what we would have the opportunity to do by having an, an outside person come in and look is to validate what we have, mm -hmm. add what we need, and also give us a, a way to verify the training level that our officers receive because a policy is only as good as the person that knows the policy. I can have all the policies I want, but if you don't get the proper instruction mm -hmm. and a, a validation of that instruction, when it comes time to go into a lawsuit, that, those are the first things they expose on you. So we want to get... Basically an attempt to um, 
to a policy level, or rather um, an audit on your policy on an operational level with regard to laws, particularly as they've changed since the last time it was done? That Everything. Yeah. Everything from use of force to internal affairs to how to wear a uniform. There, there are model policies out there, and the companies we've looked at, they specialize in that, and they also give you that verification electronically so an officer can come in off the road mm -hmm. and we can say this week's module is going to be this policy you're required to sign in and we can see that you signed in most of these companies have a small you know an easy quiz or test on the policy that we can see that they did and verify that and update easily as changes come mm -hmm. as opposed to having say every five four to five years having to do a a, a review and, and a renewal of our policies, which I mean, is very time much more time to change. Well, I'll be honest, much more I'd spend more money in staff things. time doing it yeah. than I would 30000 by an outside company doing it, uh -huh. in my opinion. I think we'd spend more time in staff doing it on our own. <clears throat> that last statement suggests that you're saying it's more uh, financially efficient to actually spend I think it's more cost dollars. effective, yes. Okay. I'll, I'll speak to that in a moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Made several notations because you know how I love your department. You are a fan. The um, <laughs> chairman raised the uh, computer support on page 21. It's a whopping basically $300 a month, $3,600 a year. It's not a big item, but for <coughs> what's being detailed here, and I know it's a bit dated, but by, by uh, Divining what what service you're getting from these things that are specified in outdated fashion, even that three hundred dollars seems a bit much. I'd like to know more detail on that, and we can just do that privately. And I just which want to, three? I'm sorry, just so I'm thirty six hundred dollars. It's listed for uh, annual internet service, website, email, and the non DSL connection. Okay. Um, just we can do that uh, one on one. Okay. Uh, okay. And. You may have an answer for you if you want to hear it now or you want to wait. No, we'll do it offline. Okay. Sure. Too small of a line item to take up the committee's time. <coughs> what actually, actually, Chief, since you asked the question, Chief, could you answer it? I'm going to have the deputy answer that. He's a little bit more proficient in the technology, so. <laughs> please, please, so everybody knows. Yep. We upgraded to how our computers talk to the station so that officers in the cruiser can run uh, queries, license checks, record checks, whatnot. And it's how it, it's it's basically a uh, like a mobile Wi-Fi or a MiFi you call them, and it talks to the station so that it's a connection point from the car to the station. Each car has a, uh, a mobile device that gets wired in and connected, um, and it just allows the computer to talk to base. Well, that's a totally a different model. level of service than what's here in the was the flight. computer in the car talking to the computer? Yeah, I understand. Station. Yeah. I mean, I can do that with my own car computer with a phone company, for example. I'd get the same kind of uh, uh, connection with the internet, for, for example. Right? Same technology for communication. You I mean. get a little portable device you can carry around. I, I, if you could, again, if you could update that line item so it's more descriptive. Sure. Uh, appreciate that. Um, Chief, you got a raise this year, did you not? This year, 2017. 2017, yeah. Um, one point something, I believe, or two points something. 1.65. 1.25. 1.65. Thank you. 1.65. 1.65. Thank you. Now, Chief, there's this thing out there that I refer to as the Ocean Boulevard fence. I certainly know what I'm talking about, right? No, I don't. We put up a fence now on Ocean Boulevard in the summertime. Crowd control gates you're talking about? Oh, crowd control what? Gates. Gates. Okay. <coughs> crowd control. I'll try to remember that term. Crowd control. Well, thanks. Did they come out of your budget? Um, yes. And how much was that? Roughly just under $15,000. And that was for the <laughs> purchase, right? Yes. Yeah. Before we were leasing them from some other towns, right? No, we had uh, previously we we owned our uh, section of our own, 
but it wasn't sufficient to accomplish what we wanted, so we borrowed some from the uh, city of Lawrence, Massachusetts. They were kind enough to, we had loaned ours to them for one of their festivals, and they were kind enough to reciprocate and loaned us their fence. But that became problematic because some of the events that we wanted to use it for, they had events going in their city, so we couldn't get the amount that we wanted. So we decided to make the purchase. Okay. Um I heard you say that we already had some existing fence. Yeah, yeah, about 36 pieces. Versus what, what did we buy for 15,000? Uh, we bought it, I'm sorry, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but we bought enough Perfect. on top of the fence we had, and I'm sorry I don't have the measurements, I wish we had known I was gonna talk about this, because I had it detailed, but basically we bought enough fence on top of what we had to go from G Street all the way to Mrs. Mitchell's on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, and then on the east side, the entire front of the, the uh, state seashell complex, so uh, F Street to D Street, enough to cover that area. Uh, sorry, I don't have the numbers for you, Tim. If I know we were going to talk about, it, I would. Yeah, have we had it. previously owned some of that fence. About thirty-six <coughs> pieces of eight-foot fence, but we didn't deploy those at the beach, did we? Yes, we did. We did. Okay. What we did, what historically, what we had been doing, we started doing that uh, back when I was deputy chief, and. When we started really seeing the decrease in the number of officers that we could get to work uh, as a whole, and then Fourth of July in particular, yeah. I had traveled around and seen this fence used in other places to help keep crowds out of the road. Mm -hmm. So the section from D Street to C Street, which on the Fourth of July causes probably the biggest right. traffic nightmare we have. Pedestrian wise, right? Yeah, it yeah. does. And by the time we get the road cleared and then to keep the crowd out of the road so we could get the traffic flowing, and that one block area would take anywhere from eight to ten officers that I no longer had just simply because between us and the state police, we didn't have the numbers to do it. How long do we own that, that, that fence? Which, uh, the, those, those fence that we the first fence? Apparently in many years. To the, so I took over in 2014. I want to say somewhere around 2011, 12, we bought the first fence, somewhere in there. And, and uh, every year we, we put it up once and take it down once, is that right? We used it for other events, but primarily it was bought to use for the 4th of July. No, I mean, presently, I mean, based on this, this year. year. we did that. After I made We're putting it up once and then taking it down once, right? That's what we did this year. We put it up just before the 4th. Subsequently, years. Is that correct? Huh? Planning on doing that subsequent years as well. Right? Yes, that is my game plan. Okay, and who's installing and uninstalling these fences? Is it you or DPW? Uh, combination. Uh, whoever we can get to help. Public Works is a great asset, but sometimes we have to go back and redo it, or if they're not available, we'll put out portions of it. Sometimes it takes more than one time at it. We'll do one side or a section and then come back and do the other section later. Well, I'm chasing, I'm, I'm on a chase down cost on that because uh, from what I see, uh, this is a necessary thing to do. Public safety. I agree. And um, they worked fantastic this year. Well, yeah, they are they're very functional in terms of their intent. Absolutely. I mean, anyone can can see that. But they are for public safety mm -hmm. on state property. Yes. Which is in fact part of the property that was not transferred in 1933, not subject to the 1933 agreement. But yet we are subsidizing the state with this exercise because we must provide public safety period, whether it's in a contract from the sale of the beach or not. But that doesn't apply here, because we're talking about the state highway, different piece of land, right? So I'm trying to nail down the actual cost that we're, <coughs> we're bearing here relative to subsidizing the state. So I just wanted you to know why I was asking those questions. I do think well, the fence is... The only thing I would offer on this, Tim, is work. if you're going to ask this question, yeah. are you then in turn going to request data on how many stops we've made on Ocean Boulevard, because that's a state road. Are we going to try to build I a I believe uh, Sleckman have been already pursuing that information with you, particularly Bean, is he not? I supply them with data on um, activity on state properties, not state roads. State roads, we are obligated as a police department right. to enforce the laws on any roads in the town of Hampton. Right. The only roads that we don't have primary jurisdiction on Route 95, and under the recent change, uh, state police can uh, come in on 101 also and do those things. But these fences, as I understand it, its primary purpose is to control pedestrian traffic. Yes. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, which is distinctly different than speeding tickets. Yes. So, I mean, that's that's where kind of like we're seeing the difference here. Basically, it's kind of sidewalk maintenance in some respect. You're like enforcing that people use the sidewalk. I'm going to have more to or disagree less. with you on that analogy. <laughs> it's fine. Was the question was the statement? Yeah. So was mine. Uh, 
I think that your your thirty thousand dollar, actually a thirty thousand dollar consultant, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I would like to, to uh, take the vote on the, the motion that's in place, but I'd like an opportunity to make a motion to uh, add thirty thousand dollars subsequent to that vote. Yeah, I was just going to ask why you're suggesting it's going to save money in the long run. I yes, I am to spend that $30,000, and it seems to make sense to me. Why would we, why would we take that out? That's okay. T uh, Timmy, you're done? Yeah, I was just saying that, you know, I I'd like to proceed with the motion on the table and then yes. make another motion where we can discuss that. That's, of course, that's what just what we'll do. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Steve? Chief, what are some of the departments across the state that are using that policy? I know, like, some of them, like, Nash was accredited. Certain departments have gone through the accreditation process. What are they? Do they use a process like this? Or what other department uses a, this type of a policy and rule procedure? With CALEA, you develop a policy and procedures and everything from how you operate your building to the arrest facilities, policies on how you arrest, handcuff. They have model policies all in all of that. Now, usually when you're going for a career accreditation, you appoint a accreditation manager, okay? And for about a two-year period, that becomes their primary task. If, you, if you're an agency that's never been accredited before, and you're going for it, that original accreditation, it is a daunting task. If we were to try to pursue that, that would pretty much be Deputy Chief Hobbs 90% of what he would be doing for the next two years would be developing those policies between implementation, meeting with the accreditation team from Kulia coming down, and then ultimately at the end, they come in and do a final review, which is about a, a week and a half to 10 day odyssey, where they come in and they go through everything and test you on it and make sure our officers, right down to the custodian, know how you operate your police department. Very expensive. Prestigious to, to, to get that. What we're talking about is coming is not Kalia. We're talking about just having contemporary policies that will meet the test of anything that we would be thrown at in a say a civil uh, matter. Somebody comes after us and saying that you know what we did in our booking room was not an appropriate tactic. What we want to be able to show is this is our policy. It's been validated. This officer is the officer involved, he's been trained in it, and here's the video that shows he followed the policy. That's our best defense, having updated policies that protect the town and protect the liability of, of our risk management. So, what I'm really wondering is who actually is using this program now? I mean, who, what departments around the state of New Hampshire? Do we have some departments that currently use it? There's, uh, there's, there's three companies outside of CLIA that'll, that do this type of thing across the country. One doesn't work in New Hampshire because they, they don't have the legal expertise. Their attorneys haven't practiced in New Hampshire yet. So it gets you down to two. The, other, the one that we're looking at, um, he's based out of Connecticut. He's all over the country. He is not in New Hampshire. Um, he's in everywhere else across the, the country, but uh, there are no um, agencies in the state that have used it. I've talked to some down in Connecticut that have used it, that speak very highly of them. Um, our agency over the last several years has started sending people to um, uh, summits that he puts on, uh, tr like two, three-day training sessions. And we're kind of adopting a lot of his use of force stuff. Um, so it works well for us. We've incorporated a lot of his uh, concepts into what we, what it is we do nowadays. And in my opinion, I think this, this would get us to meet the accreditation level of policies without the whole accreditation process, but it is the policy process that update those policies to that accreditation standard that is important for... Currently, there's nobody in the state of New Hampshire that's currently using it. That's no. using this guy, no. The individual we're talking about, I don't mind sharing it, he, he, he's a public figure. His name is Eric Daigle. He's a former Connecticut state trooper and now an attorney. He is the primary use of force attorney for the International Association of Chiefs of Police, which is a fairly prestigious organization. most of the legal advice uh, to the ICP on all things use of force. That is his specialty. There's no question. I mean, $30,000 can be eaten up pretty quick by, you know, reviewing policy rules and procedures as well as taking all the time, you know, that could be put into other avenues. So certainly uh, it's, it's 
small amount for something of updating policies, rules, and procedures. Anybody else? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor, seconded by uh, Brian Lapham. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Okay, Sonny abstained, everybody else. Jim, you wanted to make a motion? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, what page are you on, Tim? I think that was on page 26, I believe. Or 28, or 26. 26. 26. 26, yeah, bottom, bottom third of 26. Okay. <coughs> I want, to, I want to make a motion to amend the uh, police line item that we just passed uh, by adding $30,000, and I want to speak briefly to that. Okay. Right, second. Do we have a second? I'll second. Danielle seconded it. Okay. <coughs> Some discussion, Tim? Yeah, I think that uh, Chief has told us that he's looking at cost efficiency here. Uh, it would actually be almost saving money. That's my. I don't. I. I wish I could tell you, show you that on paper, but knowing what the person in charge would be, Dave, and I just think it would be more cost efficient. And given my confidence in the chief general opinion, although there are things that we disagree on, and that's okay. Um, I still like it. I am making that motion. <laughs> I thank you for the second. Uh, even though I would note that the outside agency line. Which I'm sure you've been waiting for me to speak to. I knew you were going to get there. I knew. So please let me just make the statement while I'm adding to your budget, okay? Thank you. Even though in 2016 we had zero dollars allocated for outside agencies because that money was spent out of the properly spent out of the police and fire detail fund, and then subsequently last year we allocated thirty thousand dollars to it, and yet today, as of September 30th, we've already spent over that. $43,900, and now for this year's budget, you're asking for $40,000, which completely is something you and I totally disagree on. Yes. We had that discussion Tim, Tim, wait, extent wait. last year. However, Tim, Tim, I'm, I'm making, I'm making no, no, a statement on, on my motion. Uh, what, are you of, what line are you talking about right now? Talking the outside agency. Yes. Okay, we were... We were oh. I'm making reference to the outside agency regarding my motion. Okay. Even though I believe that he could take that thirty thousand dollars that I'm asking to add. Okay. Tim, just tell me where you are in the in the budget. I can't find that. Well, there's not a page number on that. It's uh, line. Come to Four two. Yeah. Four two one zero five three three one zero. Oh, yes, it's right here. Okay, thank you very much. I, I just, you know, you're jumping around and I couldn't follow you. Thank you. Continue on, please. Even though I do believe there are other sources of money for you to get this consultant with. I understand. Um, and in spite of our disagreement on this, I still want to add the $30,000. I want to make sure that you get that that consultant because I think it makes sense. Thank you. I appreciate that. I would, I would like you to give further consideration to my arguments about the outside agency line item in the future, and I'll just leave it at that, so we don't have to have a big discussion about that, okay? Anybody else? At some point if you yeah, want. we can enjoy it offline as we yeah, have some time. Sure. Anybody else like to speak on this particular motion? Steve? Well, just the outside agencies, that's bringing in the outside offices for the yeah. summer, you know, when yeah, they need them. I guess my only thing is, is, you know, I guess, how do we make out the summer as far as bringing state police in, because, you know, my feelings that they uh, yeah, and, should and, be assisting and helping us stop. I yeah, couldn't agree with you more, Steve. They had a budget that didn't come out of the uh, taxpayers of Hampton. It came out of their budget, so it was great for years, but yeah, as budgets um, get tightened, they pulled away. But how did that work out? A lot of things transpired in the spring, because they, they run a fiscal budget, and when they were developing the, the state budget, um, there was some legislators that apparently have never come down to our neck of the woods and wanted to entirely cut that line item for the state police budget for the Hampton Beach details. And what was transfer, uh, transferred to me from the Assistant Commissioner of Safety, uh, uh, Bobby Quinn, was that there were people that didn't realize that everything east of Ocean Boulevard was a state park and state property. They didn't understand that. So that almost got cut completely. 
and uh, at the last second it was salvaged, and there was actually a little extra money put into it. So there was funding there. It's not a funding issue. It's just like everybody else's deal. They're just a little bit bigger than us dealing with the same problem. They're shorthanded, and the folks that are coming into the workforce today, they just, and again, this is not a good or bad assessment. This is not a judgment of the workforce coming in today. It's, they have a different mindset. Back in the day, this gentleman here, me, guys, we worked, we worked 50, 60 hours a week. Week after week after week after week. Because when there was work, you went to work. The extra. Today, they don't they don't look at it that way. They value their off time, their social time, better than more than we did. We host uh, classes at the at the police department under the FBI leadership group, and they talk extensively about dealing with the modern workforce. In the modern workforce, not just the police departments, but you talk to anybody in the business world. You bring somebody that's a millennial just coming out of college, that era, they do good work. I don't mean to demonize them or uh, belittle the work they do. When they're there, they do great work. We're very demanding about what we, for our quality. But they don't want to work 50 hours a week. They want to work 40, 42, but if you tell them they have to stay and, and hold them over, they have a different reaction than people of a couple of generations before, a generation or two before. It's just different. So the state police is subject to the same problem. If they offer extra work, voluntary work, and nobody takes it, that means nobody's coming. So we did experience weekends where we had little to no state police support simply because they didn't have it. It's not a, an issue of the state police not being sympathetic or supportive to the Hampton Police Department. I've never seen a relationship better between us and the state police, quite frankly, because of what we're all experiencing. It's cost us all to work better together. That's why when we went to the program of bringing in officers from other towns, I know in the past there was people that questioned the wisdom of that or, or the safety of that. We work so much with our neighbors now that we all know each other pr pretty well. We do common training, we host uh, crowd control training down at the Hampton PD that we want those PDs to come to before they come to work down there with us. It's just one of those things, we're all working with the less, so we have to consolidate our assets when we have those peak periods. So it's not unusual to see officers from Hampton working at events in other towns up and upping at the Speedway, and when they have a big event, we go up and work that. UNH, we go up and work UNH issues, they come here and work for us. Um, it's just the way of the world today. If we could use state troopers that weren't costing us money out of the taxpayers, I would. It's just not available. It's the average, the, uh, the low end and the high end of what we're paying from the outside, you know, coming in. I'd have it's to research. detail rate probably, correct? I'd have to research that for you. Um, the primary town agency we use are UNH, Epping, Exeter, Greenland. Seabrook occasionally, but Seabrook's got the same problem. They have so much work over there, they can't fill it. It's hard for them to justify coming over the bridge to work with us. So I could try to find that for you. That'd be great for the next yeah. one. The other thing, I guess, uh, just to throw out what's going on around the country here, I know uh, I was in Portland, Maine yesterday for an event uh, for the little boy there that's dying of cancer, and I know talking to the, uh, one of the deputies up there, he's telling me they're offering a 10,000 bonus just to get the police officers to come up to work. Uh, Westbrook, Maine, down in Texas. I saw something today, $25,000 bonus if you want to laterally transfer in. So across the country, it's universal right now as far as trying to get police officers on, you know, to work and to get, you know, the employment out there. So it's tight, not just in Hampton. It's, it's a universal. It's across the country right now. You know, I think that, um, I think that it's interesting uh, living at the beach and in the last, I think, two years, you've been bringing in um, details from other towns and they they wear their uniform they bring their own vehicle with yep. them and uh, I think I think it's great personally um, I think in the past I might be wrong um, you you used to try to hire um, people just for the summer and or end up training them and then they go to another department somewhere else Mr. Mr. Cameron, can you get back to the motion please <clears throat> Anybody else have anything to say about this motion specifically, about the motion of adding $30,000? Seeing none, those in favor? Uh, Barbara, you have a question? I just uh, was going to ask the chief for the exact uh, line. Uh, Tim's just adding $30,000. I'm adding $30,000 to the, $30, the, the bottom budget. Okay. 
Period. Okay, that's the motion. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, opposed? Sonny, opposed, everybody else is in favor. Mr. Any Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to make a motion to move uh, emergency management. I think it's $1,000 again this year, aren't you? It is. Just as it has been for the last... Uh, as long as I've been with the other years, years right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Regina seconded. Okay, emergency management. Basically, it's flat every year. It's a no-brainer. You don't spend it all. Right. Uh, we do occasionally spend it, but what happens with a lot of it is, is reimbursed money from, like, when we do the drills, we get money back. Yeah. And it offsets anything that's in there. Basically, a no-brainer. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Sonny, abstain? Everybody else? The reason I'm abstaining is... Well, you don't need to tell me. That's okay. You abstain. That's that's your, that's your business. Um, Chairman, you've got animal control listed here on the agenda. Yes. I don't see that as a separate line item. There's some missing something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's on a brown. I have its own tab, but it's not a line item in the budget. It's so much. Health and human services. Health and human services. Yes. That's the official Pest control. Forty-four fourteen. No, page 54. No, I know it's there. It's 44. 14. Yes. Right. That's called pest control. No, it's not. No, excuse me. No, it's not. It's under the annual report. Well, that's because you're Which we send this to the State yeah, Department of Revenue Administration. Is that last year? <laughs> that's correct. That's the DRA. Right. And so that's the, legal, that's the legal name of it. 4414 pest control. Right? That's the legal name of it, according to the DRA. The DRA, that is right. where it falls. Right. And we're trying to go by line items, correct, Mr. Chairman? Yes. And that's what the line item is called, Pest Control 4414, although we also know it as Animal Control Locally. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Did you make a motion, Tim? No, I was trying to find it. Because oh, okay. I couldn't because of the name is different, and I, now I found it. So. All, right. All right. Would you like to make a motion? Yeah, as soon as I find it in our I budget I would like book. to make the motion to move a hundred... $158,189 for animal control. I think you're in the wrong page. Animal control is one fifty. No, 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 no. 44,939. It's 54,939, Ginny. You're page 54. I will move $54,939. Oh, okay. okay. Under account 4414, known as pest control by the DRA, known locally as animal control. Would you like to second that, Ginny? No. <laughs> do, I have, do I have a second? Do I have a second? Do I have a second on that, please? Regina seconded it. Okay. Any any um, any discussion on on animal control officer? Uh, first of all, perhaps you could explain animal control. Sure. Um, animal control officer for many years uh, was Pete McKinnon, who uh, retired recently. Uh, his primary role is to enforce uh, town ordinance and state laws in regards to dogs and licensing. It encompasses so much more than that over the years. For, for 30 years, Peter just did an incredible job helping everybody with things that, quite frankly, probably weren't our province. They were more animal control but because of the uh, uh, fishing game. Uh, but because of his expertise, uh, it just became part of what we do. Um, Pete was this, you call and you got a raccoon getting into your trash. Not really the animal control officer when you look at it, but we took care of it. Pete had the, we had the, bought the have a hot traps. Uh, you got the rabies shots and the things that you need to have to do that type of work. And we just got it done for people. Uh, it's just one of those things, it's primarily the, the, the dogs and the licensing. But it just comes into any problem with, with animals, be it domestic or, or otherwise. We do make a legitimate attempt to try to help out people with those problems before they have to call, you know, a, a private entity and pay out of pocket big money to get a bat out of your house. Those type of things, Pete kind of fills the gap in on. And uh, with his retirement, we now have a new animal control officer that's filling the same. We've explained to him that we want to continue Pete's legacy of service. So that's what we can do. Wages are down because he's he doesn't get it. Paid. He was at a senior step right. under the CBA. The new ACO is at the first step. 
Um, okay, any questions? Yeah. Any, any, yeah, comments, questions? It's nice that the total line item is down 5%. Yep. 5.8, 4.8%. Yep. <laughs> but your um, overtime wages are up 57%. Can you speak to that, please? Yes. Thank you. Pete McKinnon had 30 years on the job. UACO has a couple of months. We anticipate training and seminars to be current with things to get to that level where you should maintain. Thank you. And you've got um, supplies and expenses up 40, almost 43 percent. Can you speak to that? Yes. A lot of the items, uh, I ordered an inventory of all our equipment uh, dealing with the animal control officer. Um, the firearms that we have to use sometimes unfortunately we have to dispatch an animal and some of the, tra the traps stuff is getting old mm -hmm. uh, just wasn't really what I felt was safe or up to standard so that uh, accounts for some expenses we anticipate spending on items of that nature so um, and uniforms no probably uniforms or another line yeah the, so uh, some of this is really equipment that's going to last multiple years, right? So. Yeah, most of the have a hot traps. The problem with those is, is they're made out of like most of them are made out of like a almost a wire mesh. Yeah. Oh. Um, and you get down to some of the areas we are in the, next to marshes and so on, hmm. they corrode pretty quickly. Hmm. So it won't necessarily be at this level every year, I guess is my question. I wouldn't think so. No, we, okay. we have some initial things we want to get done. Thank you. And then we can probably back off on that line a little bit over the years. I'm ready to vote favorably on this. Anybody else have a comment first? Seeing none, those in favor? Unanimous. Thank I you, Chief. We, I think we're done. Thank you. So Hope you enjoyed yourself this year. It was quick. It was thank fast. you. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. If you want to talk about those other items, let me know. Absolutely. And I'll get back to you, Steve, with those numbers. Oh. You know, while we uh, have a moment here, I uh, just want to, you know, throw a plug out. Peter McKenna was an amazing man. You know, that, guy, was, yeah. that guy would come out 24-7 when you need him. He did work that, uh, just far above and beyond. Big loss for this town, big shoes to fill. Awesome employee. And besides that, we lost someone who was probably one of the, another person Marsha has, uh, you know, recently. And I'll tell you, there's never, uh, never seen anybody in this town that worked as hard or as dedicated she was. She never missed a day of work. Five people to fill her shoes. The woman handled everything to do with prosecution. I'm talking if we make three thousand arrests and motor vehicle stops, everything else, she took care of putting that in the computer, paperwork, subpoenas, talking to lawyers. I mean, the lady did everything, and uh, Marsha will be dearly missed in this town. And uh, she's just an amazing employee, and I know a lot of people on this right now. I do, and not everybody else. So I just want to throw something out there for Marsha and Pete. Just great employees in this town. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Okay, good night. Mr. Chairman, if I may have a moment. Yes, sir. The chairman, the chairman made a decision about procedures that we would vote only on legal line items. So I'm looking at legal line items and their definition. When the and I'm sorry if, if it ruffles the feathers of those who are used to doing it some yeah. other way. But this is the new way that the new chairman wants to do it, and I'm trying to conform to his uh, <coughs> procedures. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Does anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay, good. We're all set. All right, moving right along on our agenda. We, I do not have at this time any uh, non-petition warrant articles. So item six, we're done with that. Um, we can go on to item seven, which is approved the minute. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move. Wait, wait, just one minute. Uh, Fred and Christy, thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good evening. Okay, good, continue. Back when you have some more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to move the October minutes first, because if that is approved, then I can accept the September minutes. Okay, so uh, Tim, made, Tim is making a motion to approve the October 17th minutes. Um, do I have a second? Second. Brian seconded. Okay. Any comments or changes about these minutes? Anybody? Seeing none, those in favor? Unanimous? Thank oh, you very much. I stay, I yeah, you weren't, from you weren't here, but you can still vote that. if you want. No, 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 I don't want to vote. I've, September <laughs> we have not done yet, right? That was no, October. That was October, yeah. yeah no, I okay. From that. Well, I was Regina abstained. 
because she wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Were you here? I think that's the one that I missed, so I'm going to be upstanding on that one. It says that you're here. Was I here on that one? Yeah, you were okay. here for that one. Then I'm voting. <laughs> okay, so everybody, <laughs> everybody voted that I yes, missed. except for Gina. <laughs> All right. So, next. Excuse me. Yes. On the 17th, I think you were here last meeting. Yes, yeah, we just established the last that. meeting. Yes, the one. Yeah, he just confirmed that before, his confusion was confusion. Was yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, right. everybody voted yes except for Gina. Abstained. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion on the September minutes? Yeah, Danielle will lose. September. All right, Danielle move it. Yes. And anybody second it? I'll second. Okay, Regina seconded. So, would you like to talk about? Anybody have any comments about the September nineteenth minutes? I no. do. Okay, okay, Bob, go ahead. On page two, under number six, Village District Update, it should be the Boston Circus Guild, not the Boston Very Beach good. Guild. Number six? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Circus. Duly noted. Circus. Any other changes or seeing none? So we can accept uh, Bob's motion to add circus? Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. I That's think that. I know. I think well. No, I think that I think it's <laughs> not legally it's, consensus. It's a word. Just take a consensus. <laughs> is that the state document. It is. Oh, okay. We'll be all set. All right. The state police. Hey, you have a problem with the rules? Talk to the chairman. He made them. Okay. I'm not talking to you. No. I'm not talking to you either. I was speaking generally. All right. Okay. Just as you were. Let's keep order. Let's keep order here. All right. So now we'll vote on with with changes. With circus. With right. changes. With circus. Okay. Those in favor? I'll be abstaining. Okay. Everybody voted yes, I was except absent so much Mr. Day. Henderson, who abstained. All right, so that takes care of our minutes, correct? We're up to date with the minutes. All right, um, Selectman's update report, please. Okay, so yes, there is no warrant articles because the Selectmen have decided to postpone their review of the warrant articles because next week we're going to be having a presentation from Wright Pierce about the wastewater treatment plant. And we're deciding maybe we should hear all of that and figure out, you know, what the best way about going. I mean, I don't want to see a lot of warrant articles. I don't want to see a lot of money warrant articles. You know, I have people telling me, you know, $41 million on the warrant. Well, I don't believe it's, it's going to be a $41 million warrant on the article. But what we need to know is we need to listen to these people, listen to the presentation, and then maybe have one warrant article that will sort of start the whole process. <coughs> having the engineering work done, things like that. So that's why we didn't want to do, we didn't, you know, we weren't really going to vote on any of the major bond ones anyway. So we figured we'll wait for the presentation to be over with, and then we'll have a better idea of where we stand. Okay. Anybody have any questions for, for Gina? Seeing none. Um, let's do the village district report, please. Bob? Ready? The village district is kind of in its planning season for next year. And a committee has started looking into a theme week for the week following the 4th of July, which will have a country western theme. It's still in the embryonic stage, and I'm not sure whether we'll hatch it or not, but it's being explored. <coughs> okay, any questions for Bob? Not seeing none. Jenny, would you like to give the uh, school report, please? We just started our budget deliberations at the beginning. And the budget is up 12.9%, 10%, and that is because of the building, the building pro, uh, at Hampton Academy. Um, so we're reviewing the budget, and we will have it. You'll have your budget books the Monday before Thanksgiving. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And you are to pick them up at the SAU office. Right on Scott. On Scott Road. Road. Yeah, right. Near Equator. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Okay. I understand you just said it's, going, it's up 12. 12% 12 so far. We just started doing our deliberations. 12% exclusively because of the rebuilding? 10% is because of the okay. building. 2% okay. is because it's of the It's got to do with shifting people around. Is that the cost of doing that? Shifting people around? Is that what that means? It's the, it, no, it's the cost of the building project. <laughs> well, I thought that was funded separately by, for the bond. That would still add to your bottom line of your budget, Tim. Right. Oh, you're talking. All right. Payments. So it's up because of the bond payment. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for yes. that clarification. Well, did you have a question? <coughs> no. <coughs> so now we're going to move on to other business. Yes, I have other business. Okay. And.
first, I want to answer um, Sonny's question from our last meeting. Uh, you wanted to know who was going to pay for the water connection on Liberty Lane. Liberty Lane Associates, yeah. the customer. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Tim, you had asked a question, something I was supposed to look into, and I, I forgot it. It's in the minutes. You can remember that way. No, you, you mentioned <laughs> it before this meeting started. Yeah, right? it's in the minutes. I confirmed it's in there. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, you know, uh, asking uh, if uh, the... Uh, oh, yes, yes, about the lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah, you want to ask Regina? Well, I didn't want to get into it. Okay. I, we spoke to it off camera, but the basic <coughs> question was: We know that there's a lot of you know there's a lot of increased expense in the legal department, and we also have some sense that there's a lot of um, activity going on that's driving that expense. But we we don't have a, a, a you know a clear view of what that that is, and we also understand there's some sensitivity about that and so we talked about uh, maybe having it more public so that we could have an understanding so that we can then advise the voters that you know we, we have an understanding and there's, and there's reality behind these, these, these increases and so that's why we were looking for a, a, a sense of whether or not he'd entertain a non-public at I think he's scheduled for a December meeting yeah I have that here somewhere too so for Mark to come here and have a non-public? Yeah, he's going to come here anyway. But well, he'll be coming here. Schedule as a non part of it as a non-public, and then we'll do our normal public thing, which is going to be more uh, and, and so normal. basically what, what you're asking is that, that you mention this to Mark, okay? That uh, if there's something that Mark wishes... Now, again, this is totally up to the lawyer. This is up to Mark. No, we're just we're just asking we're whether just asking he entertain a, a non-public uh, 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 forum so that we can get more clarity than we might get in a public forum with regard to his uh, significant increases in expenses. And it may not be necessary. You may be able to explain it all. Okay. Tim is just asking. I will... I will have the conversation with Mark, but a lot of the increase in expenses has to do with certain cases that can't be discussed. Town Council is working right. on right now that we can't okay. bring up open into the public quite yet. Like right. the whole thing, you know, when we were able to do it with San Susi as far as the whole power plant, right. you know, we did, we presented that, I think, either represent uh, Selectman Bean or I don't remember whether it was him or the town council that had read a letter that sort of was a summary. And that, but there's just, we're still at the point with a lot of things going on that those certain cases can't be made public yet. But I will definitely. Have That's to talk exactly to what yeah. we want to avoid is making that stuff public by having a non public. <laughs> About three years ago, we went through the same thing, and he was more than um, helpful in coming in and brought us some things that are confidential and so he has done it in the past okay okay so that's good all right um anything else yes i have other business yeah. go ahead please actually it's old business but that classifies as other business just so, other business right uh, old new i've had difficulty with uh this budget book because you know i'm now used to analyzing the budget with the spreadsheet which we didn't get what is the status on us getting oh, the you would ask you would ask christy to give Give us the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. She simply forgot it. Excel she, file. She's been, you know, pretty busy getting mm. this thing together. Well, there's a problem with the communication. Is I can't talk directly to her. I have to go through this this ritual. Would you know? ask her, please? Yeah, she was just here a few minutes I, ago. But I yes, know, I but, will ask her. But I had to wait for the other business to ask. I know. No, that's okay. That's all right. Trying to conform. No, I will actually. If once I'm going to try to run out there real quick before. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you sure? Because I just I don't have a key to here, so I just want to grab yeah, go, my. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead, please. All right, and I'll ask her. And then she just emailed yeah, it to us as an attachment that she did pre previous year. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sure fine. she just forgot. If you have to go, go great. Ahead, go ahead. Yeah. All right, anybody? Yes. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Additional. There is uh, some things coming up uh, relative to uh, funds. You know, we didn't have any meetings this spring. that were canceled for whatever reason, and so we didn't have a chance to get into it. But there are a couple of funds that uh, need to have a little bit of um, discussion on one of which is Fund 26, which I didn't want to get into tonight because mm -hmm. we're trying to be expeditious. I think when we move the final budget review from December to January, we open some time in that December meeting 
maybe we could go over some discussion on, on funds that I, that I have in mind. Right now I'm getting noise on the cable TV fund, uh, and there's also the Fund 26, and there may be other funds that come up. Uh, but those are two that I'm aware of that, that we may want to have further questions with. And we have to have Christy here for that, because it's really transactional based. Um, Tim, I have to think that um, that we would have to. <laughs> okay, so that's something that when we have our next meeting, which is uh, November 21st, and, we, and we'll be talking with the DPW, and Christy and Fred will be here. Let's ask them then. So please remind me. Okay. Well, definitely we want to ask them. I'm just trying to get the you know if you ask them faster, you, the sooner you ask them, uh, the more likely they'll be able to accommodate. I think they're going to be here anyway, but... Yeah. You think they're going to be here anyway that particular night? <coughs> my own speculation. Yeah. If you just ask them, like, tonight or tomorrow or whatever, they'll have more advanced <coughs> notes. That's all I'm suggesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So just some transactional overview of the... If she, had a, if she has a list of the funds handy, that would be great so we have an overview. Okay. Christy. Steve, I will... Hold on. Hold on, Sonny. I will uh, send her an email when I get home tonight, and, uh, and so that she can prepare herself, bring the list, and be able to uh, talk about it. I'll yield in the hopes that that time will give me an opportunity to think of what I forgot. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> okay, Sonny, you want to... Yeah, or the point I want to make on the borderline, the developer or the... He's going to pay for it, except he's going to ask for an abatement, so it would be the taxpayers who end up paying for it. I don't know that for a fact. I specifically asked Mr. Welch who was going to pay for the water connection, because you had asked, okay? And he specifically told me, Liberty Lane Associates, right, the person, the, the person that's do, that's putting into the, property yeah, I don't, I don't know that. So that means okay. that less revenue. It's, this is, is all hypothetical. Yeah, yeah that was that was one of the things that Mark worked on for so long. That's why it took a year to make sure the town had no liability with that. So if I, it's completely owned by the association and they have to maintain it. Okay, does that answer your question? Anybody else have any uh, any business at all? Okay, seeing none. Is my expectation that I'll be showing up at the school committee meeting on Tuesday, uh -huh. not as a budget committee member. So don't let anybody be confused by that. Okay, I'll just be plain old citizen, citizen Jones. Jones. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I'll look at a motion to adjourn. I move. Bob. Bob moved, seconded by Regina. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, we're adjourning. We're adjourning. Uh, yeah. Adjourning. Adjourning at 9:18. Thank you, Channel 22.